How do you like your day seven serve? With top pros making the run of a lifetime? All in. I'm happy you didn't snap with a flush. Can't wait to see that hand. With amateurs <laughs> living the dream, we all dare to dream. Oh my God. With everything at stake. Keep it up. The World Series of Poker main event day seven. Every big hand until the final table. Delivered right now. Every day is a good day, but day seven of the main event with chips, just a little bit better. Hi, everyone. Lon McCarron, along with my broadcast partner, Norman Chad, bringing you the day that final table dreams are delivered. Karai Aldemir is alive and well with nearly 19 million. It is day seven, and I've yet to come up with anything negative to say about Karai. If he makes the final table, I will unleash. At our secondary feature table, one-time chip leader, Ramon Colias, primed for the final table. Another nice guy. Well, what is this poker? world coming to. Henry Park, yes, yet another one-time chip leader, is stacked with almost 30 million, but the story might be Jareth East seated to Park's right. Well, actually not seated yet. Oh, what's he, binge watching Monty Python? No problem. Memo to Jareth East. I would consider sleeping inside the Amazon room before I risk missing the start of day seven. Here are the top chip counts with 36 remaining. Nice guy, Henry Park on top. 29.5 million. Josh Remedio surging with over 21 million. We've got an ex-Marine, a player who fosters kids, plus an Argentine rapper. I don't know, Lon. This all seems rather suspicious. There is Jonathan Dweck, who once flew deep in the main event wearing a Superman costume. He is at our feature table, enjoying yet another strong performance. They're very long days. I mean, we start playing at 12 and we finish usually after one. You go, to, go home, go to bed, you wake up, eat breakfast, shower, and you have an hour to kill before you start. So I played the main event about 13 times. My deepest run came in 2017. I got a lot of love because I dressed up as Superman and uh, people still would recognize me at you know, local casinos and other places. Hey, Superman, how's it going? Aren't you that guy? And, you know, I had a great time doing it. Uh, I just, you know, I think laughing is one of the greatest things in life. And, you know, even when you play poker, you know, I play with some players and they laughing and joking at the table and you have other players who they're, they're miserable at the table and, you know, they're, they're very serious all the time. And uh, I try to, even though we're playing for a lot of money, playing the main event, it's a big deal. I try to have fun and just laugh while you can. Dweck says the formula for more social poker is simple, fewer headphones, fewer sunglasses. Superman's pretty smart. Glenn Beebe woke up, literally, with Ace-King suited for the first hand of play. He pushed his stack of about four and a half million into the middle. Action on Dweck with Ace-Queen and a slightly bigger stack. He's going to make the call. Oh. Come on, baby. BB, 56 year old healthcare right. professional from Austin, Texas. By the way, when Dweck is not donning a cape, he advises private companies in financial investments. Could be a short flight for Superman Dweck here on day seven. If he loses this pot, gets short stacked. Here's the flop. All diamonds. Ooh. Dweck loving that, but he's still behind. Uh oh. Two cards now to decide the fates of these two amateurs. BB on his feet, and it's the other red ace on the turn. Come on. Dweck needs a diamond or a queen to bust BB. River card, tray of hearts, and BB will double up to over nine million. And that puts a hurt on Jonathan Dweck. Yeah, Dweck now down to five big blinds. And the average stack right now is about 11 million. Oh. Some makeup work to do. Let's go to the secondary Start feature block. table. And Jareth East on the left has finally found his way to his seat. Yeah, thanks for coming, Jareth. It's not like he's late because he's got to shave. And to save time, he should just wear the same thing every day like Jack Oliver does. Oliver even straps himself into his main event seat. 
Play goes on. It's Osgur say Chilmish with pocket fives and the raise to 500,000. The blinds right now at 120 and 240. Oliver with tens. What, what do we know about this kid, Lon? I uh, used to work as a financial analyst for Jaguar. A Jaguar? Yeah, that's how they say Jaguar across the pond. Well, right. how do they pronounce, I want a new broadcast partner? <laughs> Oliver, three bets to a million four with his pocket tens. George Holmes in the big blind says no thanks, so back to Say Chomish. Say Chomish studied physics at Yildiz Technology University in Istanbul. I believe they are the horned frogs. A bit steep maybe for pocket fives, but he has more than twice of Oliver's stack if he wants to speculate. Who is late to day seven? Hmm. And FYI, Judas showed up 10 minutes early for the Last Supper, which was a tell. <laughs> there is a call for 900 grand more. Heads up. Tens against fives. No 10, no five. Oliver's still good. Check to the re-raiser. I've noticed young Jack is rather deliberate. Hmm. He checks back. Turn card eight, both with a gut shot straight draw. Only Oliver's is good. The glare off of Chomish's bald dome is very distracting. That's why I use Rogaine. And will someone please go over there and help East finish stacking his chips? Jeez. He's got a lot, almost 13 million. Takes time. See so Chomish, meanwhile, cutting out a bet with his pocket fives. That's 800,000. I am reminded of what Albert Einstein once said. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. What made you think of that? Well, no reason. Just had time while Jack Oliver contemplates world disorder. We do often have a lot of time as he contemplates. There's a call. Oh, oh look, Jareth East is joining us. <laughs> Deuce of clubs. Chilmish, not happy with the turn of events or the events on the turn, getting his bet called. He checks now. I like that Chilmish proceeds very, very quickly. And for a guy who takes no time deciding what to wear every morning, Oliver takes a lot of time to figure out what he's going to do with the rest of his day. Oh, oh, oh. East. I I look, he's preparing for battle with his shades. Get him clean. Well, one Brit gets his glasses cleaned. This Brit figuring out how much he wants to bet here with his pocket tens. And that is two and a half million and a snap fold from Seychilmish. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for the snap fold. And look, East is now ordering food for the dinner break. He doesn't want to miss any hands. Uh, the best hand to start was best at the end. Oliver up to 10.7 million. All right, let's get back to the center ring. Jung Woo open raise with Queen Jack of Diamonds. With pocket jacks in the big blind is Steven Gerber, 61-year-old risk management consultant from New York. That appears to be a World Series of Poker baseball cap from 1942. Uh, there was no World Series of Poker until 1970? Uh, that's what they want you to believe, Lon. Man, believe me, the history books just lie and lie. Raise it to 1.5 million. That is a three bet from Gerber. The Queen Jack suited over there. The seventh prettiest starting hand in the game. I doubt it's the seventh. I, I gotta look it up. Yeah, you look it up. I am knowing off the top of my head. Woo, a poker pro living in Southern California. Makes the call. Look at the bill of that cat. It was grazed by bullets during the war. <laughs> Gerber cashed here back in 2013 and 2010, and apparently 1942. <laughs> Gerber's pocket jacks are still good, but Wu picked up a flush draw. Well, I like that Gerber fears not the ace out there. You can't live your life thinking that everyone else walks around with an ace in their pocket. No, sir. If you do that, the terrorists win. Gerber with the now infamous quarter pot bet. You know, however, Gerber should be worried that Wu might have a diamond draw. Wu, with his diamond draw, makes the call. Gerber doesn't care. He's a man in a man's game. No, oh, he better care now as Wu does turn his flush. 
Well, here he comes. Call him. Huh? Call him. Call him. Call. Wow, that was quick. Woo! Snap called all in. The double up is his. Even Robert the dealer couldn't believe Gerber was all in. He said, pardon? Turn your cards on. And Gerber can look and look and look, but he got it in on the turn drawn dead. Yeah, and the What's risk by this that? risk Thank management you. consultant does not pay off. He's left with 12 bigs. Yeah, Wu's going to double up without uh, a sweat. That all in seemed a bit impetuous. And boy, poker's changed a whole lot the last 80 years. <laughs> live and learn. Pocket jacks. You can't live with them. You can't live with them. Back at the Rio for more Day 7 action. If you're wondering how important a big Day 7 stack is to eventual final table success, hey, we got your stats. Hossein Insan was second to start Day 7 and won it all. In 2016, Kui Wen was near the bottom of the chip counts, and he won it all. Always nice to have chips, but you're never out. Well, until you're out. Zhong Wu is not out. He doubled up, and he's neck and neck with Chance Corneth for top dog at this table. There's 31-year-old Ukrainian poker pro, Denis Predvor. His first made event cash. Short stack at the table. All in for 3.1 million. Five chip stacks with fewer than 15 big blinds at this table. All right, I'm all in. And Dwex is all in with his pocket sixes. By the way, how come Spider-Man has all these new movies, but Superman is just on the sidelines? Uh, you're right. Spider-Man is hot right now. So, all right. Preet Vore is the one with the bigger stack. Right. That man, Jonathan Dweck, at risk with his pocket sixes. As you mentioned, Dweck, a financial analyst in Toronto, was lucky enough to find a company with the same name as his, Dweck Capital. He once rented out a small theater and performed stand-up for family and friends, so it's like an all-in. Indeed. There's the flop. Ah. Yeah, that's the sound of a jack in the flop for Predvor. Dweck looking anywhere for help. Five of hearts doesn't do it. A little closer than that. Now only a six will save Jonathan Dweck. River card. All right, good game. Good game, man. Good game. Jonathan Dweck out after another strong main event performance. You, you know, when I had kidney stones, I didn't want a photo of them All at right. any point. Good luck, everybody. Dweck has cashed nice. in the main event in 2017, 2019, and now 2021. Dennis Predvor's short stack gets a little healthier, but 4.8 million ain't what it used to be. See the pain on Jonathan Dweck's face as he is eliminated. And right now he is with our man Jeff Platt. Jonathan, I know it is tough in the moment, but that is two really deep runs in the main event. Yeah. How proud are you of what you've been able to accomplish here? Um, you know, to be honest, I really wanted to go further this time. Um, you know, I think uh, overall I'm pretty happy with the, play, the way I played in general. I think uh, on day six, you know, I could have played a little bit better. But, um, you know, I'm just an amateur player. But, you know, I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to go further in the main event. How much better are you at poker now after two oh, deep God. runs in the main? Um, I think uh, I'm always working on my game and uh, studying and trying to learn. And, um, you know, just trying to play the best I can. Are we going to see you every single year? Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, I, I love I love the main event. I think it's a special tournament. Um, it's the one I look forward to every year. Um, you know, I, I love the main event. I think it's uh, one of the best tournament the best tournament there is. Great seeing you this year. Thanks so much for the Thank time. You. Out in the field in the white, Ronnie Abro. You We're may recall Ronnie shouted, round. "Ace King owes me!" with his double up hand on day five. With seven big blinds. He's all in with deuces against Cabrera's kings. <laughs> Abro, 43-year-old from Michigan. Nah, three, three, four. Thing on the floor. Three, three, With three four. spades. No chances on the floor. Thank right. you. Oh, man. No chances. <laughs> Cabrera rooting for Abro. No deuces. Back door straight. King no. Five of diamonds. I think you know it. You're already ahead, man. That doesn't help. No fight, bro. No hearts. Abro's got to have a deuce. The river, four clubs, and that closes out Abro's main event. Pocket deuces owe him.
I can't call it with more about it. It's inevitable day seven eliminations earlier than both Jonathan Dweck or Ronnie Abro wanted. We're down to 34. It really is a show within a show. This is a cash game. These people are going at it for real money. But then this sub layer of, and we get to know why. Ronnie Abro enjoying some post bust out time with his supporters. A nearly $200,000 score for his 35th place finish. What a great result for the Michigan native. Well done, sir. So Dweck and Abro out, leaving us 34 players here on day seven. Average stack of 11.7 million is 48 big blinds. Plenty of play left in an average stack. One of the factors that makes this tournament so beloved around the world. Jungwoo and Chance Cornet, the two big stacks at our main feature table, both with about 12 and a half million. Action here folded to the big blind. Bracelet winner Robert Mitchell thinking about Ace King suited. Blind versus blind, creating skepticism since 1883. Mitchell limped. All in. Gerber all. says all in. And a snap call from Mitchell. He induced that shove. Okay, I've got outs. He's got king 10, I got ace king. Can't fault yeah, Gerber ten. there. Short stacked, but he's had lousy all in timing on day seven. Gerber was taught poker by our old friend Paul Spitzberg, CEO extraordinaire. And Gerber is at risk. What a quick fall ten from ball. Grace just a few hands ago. He had 10 milli. Now, Looking to stick around. No tin ball. Mitchell watching comfortably yeah, from the sidelines. Yeah, little club ball. Little club. And Kerber sits back down, but probably not for long. Still no ten. Four. Hmm. We got this. We got this. We got this. We're on ice. We're iced. <laughs> We're iced, Graham. That's that. Yes. It is. Good luck, everybody. Thank you. Steven Gerber out. Got to feel a little shell shocked. Easy game. Good luck. Game, Good game, Good game, man. Good game. Good the, the World Series needs to hire somebody to escort players away from the table. Maybe a stand-up oh. comic to put them in a better mood after they bust. Stapes! Well, we had a good pace of eliminations to start this main event, but it fell off during day six. And day six is normally when we finish the day with about 27, but we only got to 36, so it's either going to be a long day seven or we'll see a flurry of bust outs. So far, three gone, bringing us to 33. All right, so with Dweck and Gerber gone, this table charges on seven handed. Mattia Dobrich, the short stack here with ace nine suited. 31 year old Croatian pro, 15 bigs, might be Heidi Ho. Colin. Ah, that is a Heidi Ho, I guess, in Croatian. Uh, Ivan Zufic, the only Croatian to ever win a bracelet in a World Series online event last year. Matt Schulte, another shorter stack. 35 year old local pro and sports better. Come on. And he says all in for just a bit less than Dobrich, and now Corneth with pocket tens and a big blind and a big stack. That one's like 2.8, right? And Chance makes the call looking for a two-for-one special. He's favored for the double knockout. I mentioned on day six that it felt like Corneth had busted 300 players at this main event. Now, if he starts getting double knockouts, Lon, he's going to stretch Las Vegas' Uber service to its limit. So the pros pro Corneth taking this big moment like he's been there before uh, because he has. All right, here we go. Big moment for these three players. Schulte with the chip leader coaching patch. Doesn't want to get knocked out by the chip leader coaching mogul. So Dobrich with ace nine. Schulte, ace queen. Corneth with pocket tens. Here we go. Oh, my. A set of tens for Corneth. A flush draw for Team Croatia. And a Broadway draw for Schulte. The flop I was looking for, though. <laughs> Turn card. <laughs> wow! <laughs> now Schulte adds his own flesh drop. Look at this. Oh my god. This is a perfect sweat wall, you guys. Incredible. Can Corneth thin them off? Schulte looking for one of 10 outs. 
Dobrich looking for one of seven outs. Corneth looking for the double knockout. The river card, a blank, and boom, boom, the double knockout for Chance Corneth. I'd like to see wanted posters for this Chance oh. Corneth in every post office in this nation. Thanks, man. Schulte and Dobrich with the same yeah, reward a, for their deep runs in nearly 200 yards. That's a board large. made for TV right there. <laughs> Good luck. Schulte. What a hand to witness. <laughs> Destroys lives and laughs about it. What? I did, I did. Is it in your pocket? Well, I couldn't cheer for a red or a black card. <laughs> I just had to hold my breath and cross my fingers. <laughs> what a moment for Chance Corneth. Wakes up with tens in the big blind and they hold, sending two players home. And now we are down to 31. Back inside the Rio, let's get right to Jeff Platt, who has some background on Spain's Ramon Calias. If you played against Ramon Calias out here in the Amazon room, you probably know what a tough opponent he is to deal with. And it's pretty wild for us to think that he could win two of the biggest tournaments of the last three years. The Spaniard won the Poker Stars Players Championship back in 2019. That score was good for more than $5 million in the biggest 25K event in poker history. And in that event, he had a well above average stack throughout the final three days of the tournament. He's on the same path in this one. The chip leader going into day five, second place going into day six, a top 10 stack to start play today. Chips are nice. Skill is nice as well. Ramon says he is a significantly better player now than two years ago. In that Poker Stars Players Championship, Colias had to beat French bracelet winner Julian Martini heads up. He's at our secondary feature table. His under the gun raised with pocket nines attracted two callers. Jack oh. Oliver on the left with Jack six of clubs and Jareth East with ace queen off suit. Here's the flop. And Oliver with a monster flop, top pair and the flush draw. And he checks over to Colias, 33-year-old from Andorra. Picture a mountain village while watching the Tour de France. Nice. And now Colias following up. 500, 10,000. East with not a flop to love. East looks well rested. <laughs> East met his girlfriend on Tinder. So let me see if I have this right. He can wake up on time to go online and tell people he likes sunset walks on the beach, but he can't wake up in time for day seven of the main event. All three with healthy chip stacks. But East is going to fold here. Now to Oliver with options. By the way, if I were Oliver, I would have donk bet this flop from here to Andorra. Those calling chips it looks like yeah 510,000 turn card and snap just like that Coleus retakes the advantage with his set of nines another check from Oliver and Dora by the way had an uprising when casinos were banned which directly resulted in the revolution of 1881 wow I, you know I actually used to go skiing a lot in Andorra you don't even ski do you uh, well, no, I don't. <laughs> Kalias now but reaching 2.6 million. 2 million Only two cards in the deck put Oliver on his heels without him knowing it. I'd still feel pretty good about my hand if I were the young Brit. Well, you're not young and you're not British. Well, you're not young and you're not Al Michaels. Well, you're not young and you're not Gabe Kaplan. Okay, I'm going to put a stop to this before it gets personal. Oliver is going to make the call. Cool. Nice pot brewing. Over 8 million. River card. Four of hearts. Oliver gets no love. He checks again. And Kalias, certain he has the best of it now. Oliver called a big turn bet. How much more? does Kalias think he can extract from Oliver here? Uh, 
giving a count on Oliver Stack. I mean, and he wants them all. Oh, that's too much. It's for the rest of Oliver's chips, and he doesn't much <laughs> like it. It's so, so hard to call off your stack with one pair, even top pair. I mean, you call off with one pair and get swept out of the main event on day seven, I think you'll have trouble falling asleep for 20, maybe 21 straight weeks, uh, unless you listen to a Best of Lon McCarran DVD. <sighs> Had to go there. You earned it, Gabe Kaplan. Oliver wants to fold, wants to call. <laughs> oh, don't pick that one up. I think he's listening to you. No, he does fold. It is the correct fold, but it stings. Yeah, he doesn't like it, but the right decision, and he's still got plenty of chips left. Oliver's not quite sure. And Kalia stacking chips again. Let's go back in the field. Ruslan Dykstein three bet all in for 10 big blinds with a seven of clubs and our favorite foster parent, Chase Bianchi with a big stack, called him with ace jack off suit. No, don't sweat. Jack, jack, jack. Dykstein with a flush draw. I believe Dykstein records all his hands. It's like a Gus Hansen thing. <laughs> Turn card is a jack. That doesn't help Dykstein. Dykstein wants to record a club. Nope, four of hearts. Bianchi had the bigger ace. It holds up, eliminating Dykstein in 31st place. Chase hoping he can hang on to those chips. He'd love to have them right to the very end. So a bit of a scare on the flop, but Chase Bianchi dodges danger on his way to eliminating Ruslan Dykstein. Back in Las Vegas, back at the Rio for the final time, we move to Paris and Bally's the summer of 2022. Still the current series to attend to. 30 remain, current payout nearly 200 grand. Get down to French poker pro Nicolas Dumont. He has told us his favorite hand is Jack Nine of Diamonds, but he has settled for pocket sixes here and a raise to a half million. Chance Corneth, ace queen suited. Corneth with a PLO bracelet in 2010, a no limit hold'em bracelet online in 2018, and a short deck bracelet this year. All in. And he wants all of everyone's chips, as he says, all in. Now, Predvor in the big blind. Aces. Well, Corneth with a big hand in the small blind. Freed four with the biggest hand in the big blind. All in. Here in the Angels sing all in. Dumont folds his sixes, but Chance calls with ace queen suited. Chance Corneth has finally <laughs> run into a wall. Well, that's Corneth's game. Just bad luck there. Freed four started the hand with 30 bigs. He's going to get quite healthy here. That's a good hand. <laughs> I feel good on it down there. All right, here's the flop. And oh, are you kidding me? Oh, that's a good hand. Corneth has run through the wall. <laughs> the table's stunned. They're scrambling for a Corneth antidote. I want the FBI involved. I want DOJ involved. I want every law enforcement agency in this country to bring this chance, Corneth, to justice. Super unlucky, man. It's over. Freed for, like, knocked out like everyone. with aces, and he slinks away. Just no remorse, no conscience, no mercy from this guy. Wow, Chance Corneth coming off a double knockout, beating the long odds to send another out the door. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I almost threw that so I could, <laughs> I almost threw that so I could fold to him and call you. Sometimes it's good to make mistakes. <laughs> oh boy. Let's get back to the secondary table. Two Brits dueling on a 10 high flop. It's top pair for Jareth of Bournemouth and for Jack of Winchester, a two-way straight draw. He checked. East, Mensa, Karate, and Tinder. He's a triple threat. East with a bigger stack. And that's a bet of 425. Oliver with a double gutter to a straight. He might continue if he had a triple gutter. You can't have a triple gut shot, Norman. Have you ever cashed in a World Series of Poker event line? Have you ever cashed anywhere in a No Limit Hold'em event? Uh, no reason to hit below uh, the belt, partner. 
Oliver chasing. Wow. And check raising. How much do you start with? About seven. When I see a flop check raise, I usually run for the hills. Then I turn around because I don't live in the hills. I live in a modest two bedroom with a fridge full of fresca. But you get my point. East making the call and looking pretty comfy doing it. All right, over four million up for grabs for these two Brits. Another 10 on the turn. Trip 10s for East now. Conservatively speaking, I'd say that turn card works better for East than for Oliver. That's why you're here. Oliver yeah. checks East. Okay, Oliver check raised the flop and now he checks the turn. If I'm East, I'm a little baffled. Jareth yeah. checks back. Ace on the end, East is best. Yeah, Oliver misses his straight draws, and he doesn't really have quite enough chips to make a play at it. And of course, if he actually did bluff, it would not work. You see that he's got 5.4 million behind. Wow. I got to give the kid props here, Lonnie. He's playing to win. No fear. That is three and a half million, most of his remaining stack. 3.5, exactly, yeah. Nobody asked for a count at this main event more than Jareth East. Can I see what you have behind, please? <laughs> oh, just cool. He calls with the three tens and will take that nice pot. Oliver bluffs off two-thirds of his stack. He's got eight bigs left. Okay. So it's back to the drawing board for Oliver. Jareth East being shipped a nice pot. He was on time and on point for that hand and wound up scoring big time. He's over 17 million now. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high rollerball seven champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Remember we told you that Jareth E showed up late today, Seven. Well, we found the proof. And luckily, it has not impacted his day, but if it all goes south, pun intended, East might want to invest in a pretty good travel alarm clock, I'd say. East has been moved to balance the four remaining tables. They are seven-handed at the secondary feature table now with the average stack almost 14 million. Jack Oliver has the action, and he looks down at a couple of aces like a feast for a starving man. Looks like he wants some company, Norman, just a limp. Yeah, short stacked with those aces. He doesn't just want to raise and take it. He wants to call and take some more from somebody. Will he take from George Holmes and his big stack? No. How about Basu Amarapu on the button? Seven, six of spades. 36-year-old Massachusetts IT professional. Won his main event seat through a $50 online satellite. Nice. 7-6. That's reasonable. Oliver has one customer. <coughs> All right, oh. now how about the small blind? Say Chomish. <coughs> hmm. Nope. Big blind Henry Park now with a huge stack and ace queen of diamonds. A big hand for Park in the big blind. Laser focused on Oliver's short stack. You know what you started with? That's for a count. Oliver always deliberate, even when counting chips. 2.4. This is lining up pretty good for Jack Oliver. And Park. Re-raises. Oliver thinking so far, so good. I didn't expect Oliver to snap call, but 
I would like to get home before sunup. You got aces! Maybe trying to bring Vasu into the Yeah, I know what he's trying hand. to do. I know what he's know. trying to do. We You're all right. have different he's... agendas. And there is the call all in. Amarapu gets rid of his hand, and so with ace-queen suited, Park tried to overcome the long odds, knock out Oliver with his aces, exactly as Corneth did a moment ago to his victim. You were talking about ace-queen suited. What's that? Crack he was just talking about ace-queen suited, cracking aces. <laughs> if it's to be, it's to be. Oliver at risk. Henry Park not as fortunate as Corneth was. Turn card. It's official. There's your double up, Mr. Oliver. Oliver's back in business. Good luck. 22 bigs. Not out of problem. England, UK. You're a real fighter. Good luck. <laughs> We're here to battle. Interesting how the same amount of chips means so little to Park, yet so very much to Jack Oliver. Perspective is life. Survive one more elimination and you earn another 43 grand. Very serious money coming into focus at this main event. Ramon Kilius with a huge stack. Open raise with pocket fives. Chance Corneth in the big oh. blind with a bigger stack. And he'll make the call. Both of these pros with 100 plus blind stacks. All right, Norman, let's watch the big dogs tangle. All right, Chance with top pair and an open ender. He's still Chance. Check. Check, check to the turn. Both with flush draws. Chances, of course, right. with the better of the two. And they're not tangling. These big dogs are just sitting yeah. around, Norman. Yeah, pretty small pot. Ten. And uh, here we go. Flush versus flush. Let's get the chips into play. Did, did Corner just re peek to see if he had a spade? Well, what is this, amateur hour? He's wanted nationwide for a series of poker crimes, and he's the founder of Chip Leader Coaching. And all of a sudden, he's Joey from Friends? <laughs> all right. With his queen of spades, Chance putting a bet together. And so far, that's just like an eight of spades bet. <laughs> ah, there we go. Well, since they had gone check, check on the flop and the turn, Kalias might pay off a bet here. A million, 150. Okay. Call. And there's the call. Chance over 30 million. Kilius takes it all in stride. No worries here. This Corneth keeps fleecing the public in broad daylight. Big dog still early. Didn't tangle the way I expected, though. All right, returning to the secondary feature table, which has been lively here on day seven. George Holmes in the green shirt. He's got 18 million chips and King 10 off. 49-year-old Atlanta recreational home Eight, game player. 525. Holmes raises to 525. Amarapu now. Gets rid of his button. You know, Park's running out of room for his chips there. He might ask Halverson if he can rent some of his table space. Park has the action now. Jack 10. And it looks like it's worth 285 more at least. Yep, just a call. Oh. Holmes with the bigger 10. There's the flop. And Park gets the best of it, yeah. holding a jack. He checks. Holmes' first main event was in 2019, and he cashed. This is his second main event in 2021, and he has cashed again. George doing the continuation thing on the paired board. 450,000. Now Park. Wow, check raise with no hesitation. When I see a flop check raise, I usually run for the hills. All right, and all right we've heard this already. Well, maybe it was going to have a different ending this time. Yeah, right. Holmes quickly makes the call of 650 more. Turn card. Nine of diamonds, and Holmes' interest a little deeper with a gut shot and a third diamond on board. Shy away or let it work for you. 
look at this, that the home game guy gets check raised on the flop. He calls with nothing. Now he's plowing ahead with a bet on the turn with nuclear squad douche. A million six hundred thousand to park with Jacks up. Remember the ER doctor we had, Ron Jensen? Holmes reminds me of him. They just don't look like they're ever going to bluff. Park with the best hand. But pressure by Holmes. And Park lets it go. Well, I, I ain't going to this guy's home game. George Holmes break. making it happen here under the lights. All right. From his former table to his current table, Jareth East facing a six million chip all in, holding King Queen. Matthew Jewett is the one all in with pocket trays. I'm sure East already had called for a count. He did indeed, and then he makes the call. Do it from Seattle, lives here in Las Vegas. Made a World Series final table a few weeks ago. He's on pins and needles. Small flips. Good luck, guys. Oh, he said he doesn't win flips. <laughs> yeah, but last time I said that, I won it. Oh, no. Jewett, 30 year old former dealer, moved to Las Vegas this year with $16,000, lost $8,000 the first month, then went on a rush, and this is his seventh cash of this World Series. He's all in, and all spades. Oh, he's got a spade draw. I got a blocker. <laughs> Game is so easy. <laughs> never, never. I got three. He has king queen. It's uh, a seven deuce. East with a flush, but it's not over. Oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. Well, Jewett can make a straight flush with a four spades. The bag works. How strong is this? Is it one outer? You have to be out the door already. Oh, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just keep looking at it. Now it's over. Set. Oh, Jared East might show up late for the rest of his life. Hold up, give rest. Jareth East found a way to win a flip, get a nice pot, earn a pay bump for the remaining field, and stack nearly 27 million chips. For Jewett, well, he has dreamed of winning the main event since he was 12 years old, and watch Chris Moneymaker do it. Not this year, but you've got a lot of main events left. Nice hug from his mom, Mary, on his way to the payout cage. So we're down to 27. Kalia's back in the chip lead over 30 million. How does Demastinus Kiriopoulos have 28 million chips? I have not seen him around here for days. Obviously, you're too focused on Jack Oliver. On day one of the main event, day seven is just a pipe dream. Only the lucky few arrive with chips, and tonight we continue to watch them. Hi, everyone. Lon McCarron along with my broadcast partner, Norman Chad. Only three tables in play right now. 27 players left, though that might be changing as we go out to see Atlanta poker amateur George Holmes trying to knock out Mitchell Halverson. 49-year-old banking guy trying to bust the 31-year-old Las Vegas pro. 16 and a half million and Halverson's seat in the pot. And Halverson with an ace right away, his double up looking secure. Halverson became friends with Ali Imsirovich and says that's improved his game. Turn card is clean. Halverson one card away from a double. River card. Eight of diamonds. All good for Mitchell Halverson. He doubles up, and the home game guy from Atlanta takes a blow. Halverson now slightly above the current chip average. George Holmes loses about 40% of his stack. All right, so George Holmes tried to get us to 26 players, but failed. Let's take a look at the tournament summary brought to you by Saul for why three tables remain. Shorthanded play will become a factor as knockouts pile up, and that will certainly favor pros like Chance Corner. And Chance has been on a roll. 31 million chips for this guy? Wake me up when he has all of them. Ramon Kalias has to be a favorite at this point to make the final table. Ramon and I speak the same language. Actually, we don't, but I am in his corner. And we get a good look at Andreas Kniep, a real-life rocket scientist who can make you look silly at the <laughs> poker table and when comparing job descriptions. I don't think he looks cute. Yeah, I just switched from Google to SpaceX in the beginning of the year, and um, yeah, I mean, what can I say? I mean, you. 
The cool thing is everybody knows, you know, what I'm working on, and it's it's fantastic to be part of something bigger in a sense. You know, I mean? you know how it is as a, as a nerd, you know, uh, when you grow up, you look into the star in the stars, you watch Star Trek or whatever, and it's like one of these dreams. And then uh, it was like a coincidence. I was in Germany for Christmas, and I get this email, you know, from the recruiter at SpaceX, and I thought. I can never work for them uh, because I'm not American, you know, I'm just a resident. But apparently a green card is enough. And I'm like, damn, you know, I, that, that's the perfect timing and you know how it is, that's how life is. Now, I, now, I, now I'm, you know, under the rockets after we land them and it's, it's fantastic. And I do software, so we just try to support basically what we do, like building rockets, flying them and landing them and then basically refurbishing them for the next flight. And that whole process is kind of like something that, of course, we are the first to do. And what can I say? I mean, being part of this probably once in a lifetime experience, like, it almost feels like my life is a, you know, series of coincidences. I guess I fit in, you know what I mean? <laughs> Big deal. I got third place at the fourth grade science fair. Baking soda and vinegar, baby, tried and true. 480? 600. 600? So, yeah. 600, that's what I wanted to say. You'd think a rocket scientist would know the current min raise? <laughs> Andreas, or Ryo as he prefers, does raise to 600,000. Chance Corneth with queens in the small blind. Two big hands are going to collide here. There's just no way around it. You might want to duck and cover, Norman. Three bet in process. Yellow chips worth a million each. The lavender is 100K. Green one's 25K. There's the three bet to two and a quarter million. That'll clear out the shoe clerks and crumb bums. And this will get back to Ryo. Oh my. Now the rocket scientist can't remember his hand, please. Looking like a big moment. Well, I mean, these hands pretty much play themselves. Neither player could really do anything differently other than maybe act more quickly. Houston, we have a problem. All in? Ooh, all in. Call. And there we go. All in and call. Ryo looking for help. Good luck. Gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Corneth has left fallen bodies strewn from here to Pahrump. Ryo had a nice run at the main event three years ago. This one is better. This is Chance's best main event as well. Can he wear a wooden necktie but no belt? You know, I never considered that this morning. Mm. All right, here's the flop. And Ryo flops a flush draw. Loving that. My favorite now. These nerds always know the numbers. <laughs> a six would be a good card. Kniep looking for Come the on, final baby. diamond, and Come there on, it baby. is. The double up's official. Chance got unlucky, and Kniep surpasses Corneth now in chips. I think I was lucky. At the right time, at the right place. Ryo Kniep <laughs> to the moon. Good hand. Thank you. Sir. Welcome back to Las Vegas and the World Series of Poker. It's rocket scientist Andreas Kniep climbing the leaderboard up to 21 million now. Kniep just switched tables, and that's where our Jeff Flat found him. All right, a good time for us to check in with. Ryo Kniep, I'm going to be quiet. Ryo, step up this way for me, please. Back You're back in the interview chair. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you doing? And I want to know yes. how you were doing when the cards were on their backs. You with the Ace King of Diamonds, oh Chance Corneth with Queens. What kind of emotions are running through you then? Well, the most extreme ones that you can think of. I mean, like, um, it's, it kind of shoots through your head. Like, this is the moment. This is like where you know you have to run good. You have to be lucky. You have to win the flips, as they say. And I lost a couple. Before, and I was like hoping that the universe is, you know, uh, fair, which is not, as we know. Um, but I was like, okay, this is my time, it has to be. And uh, I don't know if you heard it, but when, I, when the diamonds came out, I said, I I'm a, now I'm a favorite. Yeah, to swoop myself, right? It was like, <laughs> it was like okay, the burden of like being out of the tournament. It feels like the burden is magnified because everybody's watching, right? It's like, oh, I don't want to disappoint the people. So, yeah, I mean, uh, crazy roller coaster within seconds, yeah. If he wins, will wooden necktie sweep the nation? I'd get rid of all my clip-ons for one wooden necktie. <laughs> I like Ryo. 
All right, to our third feature you, you table. Cards are on their back again, and George Holmes involved Look, again, but he's behind this time with King-Queen. Jack Oliver called all in with Ace-King with nearly even stacks. And the outs are few and far between for George Holmes. Oliver in great shape here. What do we know about this kid, Lon? Uh, he actually is just, uh, you should know him. He's got size eight and a half shoe, and he's way ahead. <laughs> well, he's been wearing the same outfit every day. It might be superstition. It might be because he doesn't know how to use a washer dryer. <laughs> River card now. And the ace king holds up for Oliver, who will count 17 and a half million in his stack. Nine, five, fifty. He covers many. Holmes covers Oliver, but not by much. He's got one blind left plus change. Taxi! Yeah, indeed. All right, good luck, George Holmes. Let's swing far to stage right at our secondary feature table. While Holmes has been on the down elevator, Josh Remedio has been going the other direction. He just saw Jesse Lonis in the white hoodie. Open raise under the gun with Ace-10 off suit. Josh, with all those yellow chips worth a million each, Ace-Queen of Spades. Remedio, 27-year-old Las Vegas pro. Lonis, 26-year-old Las Vegas pro. Solid stack of 22 million for Josh. And he's going to re-raise to a million 150. And around to the button. Osger say Chilmish. All in. And he says all in with Ace King. Not fooling around with his stack. And Lonis folds, so back to Remedio. How much is it? Remedio with the lesser ace and much bigger stack. So Chilmus seems there. comfortable. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. I don't like it. He doesn't like it, Lon. He, he's really not going to like it if he calls. Five billion and what up? What is it? Five million seven hundred thousand. That's how it's better than a billion. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's the call. Uh, I'm not a fan of the one card at a time hand reveal, I'm not lucky. but I like this guy. Usually. Evet abi tabii ki. Where Medio doesn't like it. <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry. I have a really good feeling about this. For you. I wish you could fall. <laughs> Say Chilmish still good with Ace King. Lonus missed out on top two. I want seventy. Turn card. A jack. Josh trades the queens then to win for the kings to win with a Broadway draw. Hey, three maybe. River card. Another jack, and the king will play for Sechilmish for the double up. All right. Both these guys easy to root for. Remedio gracious when he loses a big hand. And an epilogue. Jesse Lonis would have been counterfeited and knocked out had he called. So there you go. It was a hit that he could afford, but not an ideal start to tonight's action for Josh Remedio. Have you ever wondered what professional poker players are really thinking? Interesting spot here. <laughs> a moment ago, former chip leader Norbert Coe was eliminated in 27th place at the hands of who else? Chance Corniff can't keep the top throw down too long. Chance needed a queen or ace on the river. And that is how Coe's maiden main event voyage ended. Right, man. Nice playing with you. All right, guys. You're right. I don't get emotional, but the ace on the river gets a little fist pump. <laughs> if you're here to watch big time pros, the two remaining are Corneth and Karai Aldemir, both in their 30s, both with big stacks. Both will stare you down, though Chance's stare is more intense while Karai's is friendlier. Karai is very friendly. If he ever takes off his mask, he hadn't planned to keep it on all the time, it just became comfortable. You'd see and hear how congenial he is. Yep, for the moment at different tables. As we go back to our main feature table, a new group of players, including Argentinian rapper Alejandro Lococo. His run has captivated his followers and the poker community. Norman, you promised you'd wrap the last show if he makes the final table, right? Yeah, yeah, no, no spade, though. 
Yo, yo suelto bass, nunca en contra de la ley. Papo MC en escenario o en la final table desde el main event, ¿ok? I start to rap when I have 14 years. I was a kid and have friends in school who raps and I go to watch uh, rap battles. I see an amazing show and I, I really love it. So I start to rap. When I start, that was a little circle, you know? Uh, in this time is pretty big, 20,000 people in the show. So I make bottles. I don't make songs or, or albums or shows. I only bottle. We have a rich tradition of rappers making deep runs. Prahlad Friedman, Brett Ritchie, and now Lococo and No Lon. I will not be rapping the final table. That's a decision that's for the best. Lococo with a monstrous social media following. Wondering if anybody will follow him after his raise. Chase Bianchi will with Ace King of Clubs. He's got a grateful following of foster kids. Bianchi never wastes time. And he actually has all the time in the world right now because he's out of work. Does this anybody need an aggressive software engineer? E3 bet to 1.6 million. So back around to Lococo, better known as Papo MC, the rapper. And he's also nicknamed in rap as the Hardcore Beast. Mm. He's got a queen tattooed on the right hand, a king on the left hand, and an ace of spades up his sleeve, Norman. <laughs> a tattoo. In Argentine battle rap, you have to spit bars before you blink 50 times. <laughs> 1.6? Correct. He's thinking about calling for another million here? Well, the Coco getting three to one. Actually, pretty standard pre-flop call. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Papo MC. And top pair for Papo MC here. Check. Ah, I wanted the donk bet. You know I wanted the donk bet. That's 1.2 million. Follow up by Bianchi, a million two. I guarantee you they check raise in battle rap. Well, those of you not familiar with rap battles, they were started in the 1980s. Lots of bragging and insulting. Rapper versus rapper. All part of the game. They really love each other. Lococo oh. calls with the made hand. If Rigby was here, you'd have to be worried right now. <laughs> <laughs> Chase referring to Nicholas Rigby with his dirty diaper hand of three deuce. Another three on the turn. Bianchi's from the plow ahead until they plow back school. <laughs> right. It usually pays off in the long run. 3.4 million. Bianchi putting out a bet now of 3.4 million. Feeling pretty good about his ace king. Uh, but another check raise opportunity here for Popo. Eight blinks and a call. Oh, very strong. Huh? Another deuce on the end. Lococo pivoted to more poker a couple of years ago, but he's still more of a rapper than a razor. He's got the best hand here. Checks Check. again. Check. Uh, Check. He gives up. And Bianchi will muck. Lococo is sticky. You call that crap? Huh? You call that? Too short sizing, no? You don't call? Race six, 1.6, don't call? Shack seven, no? I don't know. I, I, I know about rap. No, I was playing poker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Norman, that rapper you mentioned earlier, Brett Ritchie, made day three of the main event this year. He used to be a regular on the poker circuit. You can take a picture. Show a deal, I'm gonna charge at least 50 grains. 10 deuce, off suits, under the gun. I raise, who are you? You look confused, you wonder how I do it. You bet I raise, you calling, you look stupid, man. I really put you through with looking foolish on TV. Can put me on a hand, call it ingenuity, or call me Dorian. All right, Norman, got a question for you. Lococo, Richie, battle rap, who you got? I'll take Lococo in a rap battle and Richie in a Bitcoin battle. There you go.
All right, don't touch that dial. We've got more Popo coming your way right here on your favorite CBS Battle Rap Station, Ace Queen. Enjoying the experience. <laughs> like Coco says, he has a secret routine here each day. He won't tell anybody what it is, but I believe he goes to Popeyes every morning. <laughs> Let's not overlook his chip stack. $24 million. Coco raised. Chick-fil-A, please. Popeyes, yes. Popeyes MC. Yeah. There you go. Asu Amarapu in the small blind with a small ace. Well, Coco just said he doesn't bluff, so Asu folds. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. How are you, friend? I miss you. It's good to see you I, I learned to fold. You learned? With, yeah, with, with this hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no. Free flop, I can Teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chance will come along with suited queen seven. Corneth has the same routine every morning. He hangs photos of players he's knocked out in his office. <laughs> it's a big office. Two big stacks, heads up. Top pair for both. Lococo with the kicker that matters. A yeah, great spot for Lococo here. And Argentina making much more of a mark in poker of late. Last year's hybrid main event champion was Argentine Damian Salas. A lot of great South American players. Brazil as well. Chance checked now. Lococo has chips in hand. Oh, but he checks. Hmm. Oh, top two for Lococo now. Third spade out there. Not sure why Lococo checked the flop. The ship has sailed on this hand for Chance. Half million from Lococo. Yeah, it was time for Papo MC to get busy here. Worth it to see a river card, maybe, that he could bluff? No, well, he's, he's got he flop top pair, and he still has second pair. Yeah, OK. Nine of hearts on the river. Another check from Chance. Corneth watches everything. He even knows how many times Popo MC has blinked between the turn and the river. That is a pot size bet. Queen seven chance. No spades. You like to do that, no? Like yesterday you did it too. Helps me think. Uh, yeah. Good on Lococo calling out chance for one of his little tricks. And in case they're marked, I like to put a different one on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Or if they're marked, you can see what they both are. Uh, my English not good, sorry. Huh? I'm good rapping, not playing poker. You're good playing poker. Chance sometimes makes moves with his chips or cards to see how his opponent reacts. Man, I thought it was such a good needle, but I don't think I know you well enough to say it. I don't understand, sorry. I was going to say, I think you're much better at playing poker. <laughs> 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 nice, nice. But I've never heard your music. I'm just uh, talking. <laughs> after to after today, I'm gonna listen to your music no matter what. Okay, if you were if we we made fun and table mode, I make a freestyle on the fun and table. Okay. <laughs> you do my walk-in yeah. song if I make uh -huh. it. Will you make do my walk-in song if I make it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> deal. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. You call that crap? Huh? You call that? I know about rap. No, I was playing poker. I was going to say, I think you're much better at playing poker. <laughs> <laughs> the best poker content on the internet. Your super high rollerball seven champion. Oh, yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. And Holmes have been down to one big blind, you may recall. Ark collects a straight draw on the turn. Now an 8 or a 10 would knock out George Holmes. The river card is a 6. Two pair for Holmes. He had a chip, and he keeps his chair. Let's go, George. Come on. 
time to go home yet. Let's go. Hell no. Let's go. We ain't going home until it's over. Let's go now. It was not too long ago that Holmes had over nine million before Jack Oliver took almost all of his stack. But look what happened next. Holmes still in it, and he's got eight big blinds. George's one-man rail is pretty vocal and confident. Keep it going out there, George. All right, back to center stage where the battle rapper Papa MC is the chip leader. Action on the Brazilian amateur Philip Pinto with King Queen. He raises now Team Argentina. Oh, how these South American countries love to battle. But he won't play eight deuce. Bianchi with aces. The three bet. 1.7 million. Officially not friends. <laughs> Pinto, 37-year-old, now living in Miami, doing financial and investment work. Better tread carefully against the much bigger stack of Bianchi. All right, their heads up. And just like that, Pinto drawing very thin against the Aces. Not much there for him to like. This is Pinto's first ever World Series cash. Everyone free rolling with huge money now and it just gets That's bigger after every day. Oh. Million two after Pinto. Jeez, you're playing faster than me. Checked. He gets a call. Pinto with a little air pumped into the tires, turning a flush draw. I probably would have folded the flop, but Pinto knows Bianchi is capable of aggression when he's got nothing. Risk reward time here. He's going to lead out this time. That's wow. 2.5 million. Two and a half million? All in. Bianchi puts them all in. Cool. Pinto calls. He needs help. Good luck. Man, this escalated in a hurry for Pinto, and now he's in bad shape for his main event life. If you win, I keep my friend, you know? Pinto's got to have a heart or he's done. Wow. A lot to hang your main event on, but a black 10, no flush, no chips, no final table for Philip Pinto. Bianchi's just lost a friend. His first World Series cash, almost a quarter million. Uh, I feel terribly for you. Well, if you feel terribly for him, why don't you get off your lazy butt and say goodbye to him? Jeez. You, buddy. Good run. You might have heard Bianchi call Pinto his friend. They have a little history with that. Me and my best friend. Let's do it. Pinto tried to bluff Bianchi back on day six, but Chase sniffed it out. You know, friends shouldn't steal. Mm -hmm. Friends shouldn't steal from each other. <laughs> Not nice. If you win, I keep my friends, you know? There are no friends at the poker table, especially at the main event. Or in the broadcast booth. Hey, hey, don't steal my line, friend. And scene. <laughs> All right, uh, back to action. 25 players remain, average stack, almost 16 million, and when they have them all, you get $8 million. Three players saw the flop, Long checked it, Jesse Lonis, open-ended straight draw. He says all in. 2,000,000.75. Million. Can't blame Lonis there, short stacked, has to pick up some chips. Guess who hit top pair? Karai Aldemir. And this would be for only 5% of his stack to call. He does have Kalias behind him. Aldemir, a solid a pro as they come. He makes the call. Oh, Kalias quickly folds. Slomas at risk and looking for love on the Turner River. We need a queen, queen or seven, open ended. Lonis has that former high school football star vibe going on. Aldemir has that former red chess books at night vibe going on. Lonis, the one at risk, needing help. Big one, Lonis still looking for love now on the river. Yeah, Lonis could be down to his last card. He needs a queen or a seven to make a straight. The river card. 
And that won't do it. Jack's full for Aldemir to send Lonis back home. Well, actually, he Thank lives you. here. But out in 25th place. Jesse Lonis has yeah. a World Series oh, circuit ring, and now he has a main event cash. Yeah, his biggest ever yeah, tournament cash. Well done, sir. Meanwhile, Aldemir's amazing Amazon room adventures continue. Aldemir dispatches another player. He's a few chips shy of 35 million here on day seven. What do four players left at this 2021 main event? Lon McCarron with Norman Chad. Day seven continues. Robert Mitchell with a small blind decision after Karai Aldemir raised to 850 with Jax. He's five of clubs now for Mitchell. The bracelet winner with the suited ace and a short stack. Play it all in. He says all Call. in, and Aldemir quickly calls, and Aldemir can do it again. Ace time. Jack three, man. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's almost fine. Let's throw this full because we got no go. Aldemir is friendly to everybody he's about to send home. Oh, true. Oh, it's a favorite hand, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's... Can he beat me with that? No, 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 but they... Robert doubled up once in this main event, the main feature table with Ace-5. I think Karai puts his victims in a good mood. Then puts them to sleep. No Ace, no clubs. Pretty ugly flop for Ace Five of Clubs. Turn card, Nine of Diamonds. One chance left for the bracelet winner. For Mitchell, it's got to be an Ace on the River. The River? Nope. Aldemir does it again. Robert Mitchell, his latest victim, out in 24th. Mitchell was 52nd in the main event in 2015. <laughs> and Karai Aldemir with over 40 million, best of the rest. The final table average stack, 44 million. Wow. Highlighted in red is Robert Mitchell's farewell gift brought to you by Cuervo. There are no strangers. A pay raise awaits those who make the final two tables. To the gun, short stack, Nicolas Dumont from Paris. Ah, Nicolas Dumont. Our police chief from the movies. Mm, right. I mean, he's all in for 2.65 million. And now Nicolas Vassiers, the Bayonne France poker pro. Pocket sevens. Morning. And he says all in for over 8.6 million. Isolate his fellow countrymen. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, sorry. Sorry. That Dumont was table in his hand, sorry, but it's sorry. still action to Lococo in the big blind. Sorry. I have 8.6. Too much. Here we go. It is Dumont with the shorter stack at risk. Les 7 contre 9. Les 7 contre 9 suité. Les 7. Actually, a police chief would not have a stuffed animal in front of him. <laughs> Dumont, actually a 34-year-old poker pro. He won the EPT main event in Monte Carlo in 2018. All right, so it's Bayonne, south of France, against Paris, who's all in. There's the flop. Both catch, but a set of sevens for Vassiers. Just like Robert Mitchell a moment ago, not a flop Nicolas Dumont can be happy with. Turn card. Six of spades makes it official. The 2021 main event run has come to a close for Nicolas Dumont. Good payday for Captain Dumont. Indeed, 23rd place for this very strong player. And with Dumont's elimination, it's official. Vassiers wins the French last longer main event side bet. He'll now work with over 12 million chips. Well done. So we saw that Robert Mitchell could not outrun the Jacks. Then Nicolas Dumont couldn't keep up with the pocket sevens. And we have 22 left here at the 2021 main event. How much is it? While we watched other tables and eliminations, Josh Remedio faded fast. Once a big stack with the ability to control his table, Remedio took a few too many flops, flops he didn't connect with. 
once soaring around 22 million, he's down to 8 million under 20 big blinds, far from the big stack he once was. Hey, don't knock it. You build a big stack so you can withstand a few blows, and Remedio seems pretty even keeled. Yeah, like the old joke, how'd you get knocked out? I didn't have enough chips. Josh in the small blind with the tournament chip leader ready to get to work under the gun. Karai Aldemir, ace 10 off suit. And he's got one of those new indigo blue chips worth 5 million each. That's sexy. A raise to 800,000. And now, say Chilmish with pocket eights. And he's got just over 25 big blinds. He's picked up a hand, but Aldemir has raised under the gun. And St. Chilmish with a tough seat. He's got Aldemir on his right. He's got Coleus with a big stack on his left. So what do you do here with that stack and that hand? Just call. All right, to Coleus with the second biggest stack at this table. And ace king again. So Chilmish not only sandwiched by big stacks, but by big aces. Interesting spot for Coleus here. Oh, the big stack under the gun raise, and then a smaller stack right next to him make the call. And he's got one of those five milli chips too. Not going to use it, but it is a three bet to 3.4 million. Cabrera looked down at King Queen off. Gets out of the way quickly. Josh Remedio in the small blind. Tough times lately with Jax. Man, this deck is going to run out of big hands. The the under the gun raiser, Aldemir, now at the worst of it. All right. Remedio looking for maybe a slump buster, but pocket jacks usually just get busted. All in. Nice guy, Remedio says, all in. And Aldemir does fold quickly, as does say Chilmish, back to the ace king of Coleus, and he makes the call. Remedio ahead. The 27-year-old Las Vegas pro at risk. All right, guys, here's fun. Good luck to you all. Oh, he's played pocket jacks it. before. All right, here's the flop. And a king a for Coleus. One, Remedio needs plan one. B. Should I leave? Like, just run? <laughs> yeah, just a queen, queen of spades, that's all. <laughs> Ooh, a flush draw oh. now. That was plan C. Remedio now hoping for a poker player's best friend, runner, runner, or a jack. River card. Play it, Whoa. see it is for the double up. Josh Remedio still in the hunt. He has to tell his rail. <laughs> My crowd is like so clueless. Oh yeah, Jack with a spade. Let's I guess go. this crowd has a lot of McCarran relatives in it. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't resist, could you? Josh Remedio's debut at the main event has been full of ups and downs, that's for sure. The 27-year-old graduated from Arizona State University, which means Josh probably knows how to have a little fun. They're not the Sun Devils for nothing. Remedio says, I'm just trying to wake up from this dream. Dream on, Josh. All right, Coleus is one busy guy. He picked up pocket queens now. Say Chomish under the gun, holding ace queen, made the raise. Coleus three bets again. And now we're on to park with <laughs> ace queen. Well, th th there was an under the gun raise, then a three bet from UTG plus one. If I had parks ace queen, those cards would be lining a bird cage already. You have a bird cage? I I'm just using artistic license. You have a birdcage, and you're an artist? Okay, you do your job, I'll do mine. <laughs> wow, an impressive pre-flop hero fold, if there is such a thing. Wow, Remedio's rail now cheering when he folds. There are McCarrens in his crowd. <laughs> Back to round two, Say Chilmish with the ace queen. Say Chilmish has seemed pretty snug. He's got to be thinking, I raised under the gun, and Kalia still three bet me? Sechomis down to 22 bigs now. I, I don't know if he's going to want to gamble here. He's a fun guy. I want him to stick around. 
Does he want to dance with the bigger stack? All in. And there you go. He says all in. Kolias makes the call. And Osger say wow. much in really rough shape with ace queen. Osger went one way, Henry went the other way. And the percentages are from the player's point of view. You at home know all the other aces are gone. His full name is Ura Osger Sechomish. Ura means luck in Turkish. He needs a lot of Ura now. He does indeed. There we go, to the flop. Well, that's fun, a flush It'll draw a for Kolias, a Broadway <laughs> draw for Sechomish. Not the best news in the world, though, for the all-in player. Say Chilmish awaiting mm -hmm. his Inshallah. fate. Another jack, status quo, closer to elimination. Only a non-diamond ace or king saves Sechilmish. And he is saved Whoa. with the king of hearts. Wow. Aldik, Aldik. I can't believe it. <laughs> Say Chomish, understandably overjoyed. Kalias wow. underwhelmed by taking a second straight big hit. One second, you're out. The next, you're very much alive. Say Chomish joins George Holmes and Josh Remedio on the main event roller coaster. Let's get right back to it. Action folded to Josh Remedio in the small blind, Jack Seven of Spades. Jung Wu in the big blind with a much smaller chip stack, as Remedio considers. Oh, Josh just yeah. limps, and they will see a cheap flop. I would have preferred a raise or a fold there from Remedio, yeah. but hey, they're his chips. And trip sevens for Remedio, and Wu with a lowly pair of fours crushed. Look at Josh. I think he's doing a double take to make sure that those are all sevens he sees on the flop. He's going to lead out with those three sevens, 400,000. And with his fours and the sevens on board, Wu calls. Yeah, quick call most of the time. He would have the best of it here. Ace of hearts. Wu drawing dead now. Fair. Remedio now checks. Remedio gets a little tricky here. The old bet the paired board pretending to try and steal it only to be called and then check the ace on the turn trick. That's the third time Wu has fallen for that this year. <laughs> well, after Josh's check, I would have bet if I were Wu too. 600,000 from Wu, raise. and a check raise from Mermedio. Oh, yeah, there you go, that's the real hand. Mermedio announces, I have trapped you. Raises to a million six. Raise. <laughs> and Wu announces oh, raise, Norman? I would not have re-raised if I were Wu there, but I guess he's decided Remedio is, is posturing and just wants to end it here. Damn. This is Cable. Can we say damn? You're the voice of poker. You can say whatever you wish. Damn. <laughs> Remedio really doesn't have much to fear right now other than fear itself. Remedio with the call to build a pot of 8.4 million. River card. Oh wow, disaster for Wu, who rivers fours full as Remedio scores sevens full. Yeah, what a bad card for the Southern California pro. He's definitely gonna think he's got the best of it now. Remedio checks again. Wu, it's like an earthquake wrapped inside a tsunami inside a wildfire. 2.5 million, and a quick call from Remedio, just calling, and he will show the best hand. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe Josh gave his rail a rank of hands chart. <laughs> Remedio played it ultra safe on the end, but who can argue winning a pot of 13 and a half million on day seven. Two huge stacks at the top. Remedio with a quick turnaround back up to 26 million. That's how fast it can happen at the main event as we look at the top nine stacks. Brought to you by Caesar Sportsbook. How about Josh Remedio in his first main event? One card from gone now kicking up a storm. And George Holmes down to a blind and a half, now over 10 million at the featured table. At the 2021 World Series of Poker main event, if you aren't just another shoe clerk or crumb bum, the shoe clerks and crumb bums. The shoe clerks and crumb bums. If you haven't been wamboozled. Or he is wamboozled. Or Pimla is wamboozled.
Bruce. If you haven't been just a kid with a dream. Ah, uh, he was a kid with a dream. Ah, uh, he was a kid with a dream. Then you just might be in the final 22, playing for the bracelet, playing for history, playing for $8 million. If he wins, will wooden necktie sweep the nation? Norman, you made the tease. That's supposed to be my territory. Well, we'll discuss that later. For now, day seven in full effect. 36 players began, 22 remain. We'll play down to nine. Lon McCarran here with the tease-stealing Norman Chad as we look at the tournament summary brought to you by Saul for Why. What a great turnout for this year's main event, all things considered. The remaining players with an average stack of 45 big blinds. Josh Remedio has... 80 big blinds. What are these kids wearing across their chests these days? Is there an amusement park ride during breaks? 31-year-old Karai Aldemir is unflappable, and he's above 34 million chips. Different mask, same story. Nice guy, huge stack, hard not to root for him, but I'll try to figure out a way. At the feature table, more players to watch, including 49-year-old George Holmes, the home game pro, back from one big blind to almost 18 million now. The Braves win the World Series, Josh R.A. wins Player of the Year, and now George Holmes, nice run, Atlanta. You're overachieving. Here's what we're talking about with the one big blind earlier on day seven. Holmes lost a big all-in and nearly his entire stack. Holmes with king-queen against the ace-king of Jack Oliver. Oliver won and took almost all of Holmes' stack. But George is on the comeback trail. If this were a movie, we'd say this was not realistic. Hey, frankly, I haven't seen a realistic movie since Independence Day. All right. Three tables of players remain. At table three, Glenn Beebe on his feet, poker code. He's all in with Jack-7 off, not poker code. Ark Onokul called and leads with King-10. Oh, I almost didn't see Beebe there, so well camouflaged. Ark with nearly 40 million. Good luck, man, no matter what. You're a good dude, man. Good luck. FYI, if I'm all in with 22 players left in the main event, don't talk to me, don't touch me, don't wish me good luck, don't even make eye contact with me. I like that. <laughs> Not bad. Open-ended for <laughs> BB. <laughs> in fact, I'd prefer if you just left the table and didn't come back until the next hand was dealt. <laughs> BB needs the river or he's out. Looking for a three, seven, eight, or jack. And Ark's the kind of guy who just might be okay with BB sticking around. The river card. A queen and BB's day is done. For the Texas amateur, his 16th World Series cash, and this is a big one. Yeah, worth almost 242 grand. He finished one spot better in 2000, only earned $32,000. And with that pot, we have a new chip leader, an arc on a cool, nearly 43 million. The chip leader here wears his baseball cap backwards? Not on my watch. What a rush he has been on. We saw Josh Remedio at the beginning of the show. We spoke to him about his improbable main event run. I like to think I'm pretty tight pre-flop, but uh, I think I am more than willing to put people in spots where other people would not be willing to. It doesn't really affect me at all that the, that the cameras are watching and that my friends are watching because when I'm in a hand, uh, the only thing that matters is the chips and the cards. Everything that's right in front of me is the only thing that, that's real. Everything else gets kind of blurred out. I didn't realize that the main event was my dream until I actually entered the main event. I've never thought that I would be even close to cashing only because, again, I don't play tournaments. I have never cashed an event over $300. I'm lucky enough to play one main event and then cash, but you know, multiple people I've talked to, they have played you know, 10 to 15 main events that have never cashed, or they, they've only min cashed. And here I am playing my first one, and honestly, it just feels so surreal. Every day I wake up like thinking that I'm just dreaming, but no, I'm going into the next day, and you know, I'm taking it one level at a time, you know, one day at a time, and I had no idea that I would ever make it this far. It's, it's incredible. Josh says his greatest strength at the poker table is no fear. He also says his greatest weakness at the table is no fear. With 44 milli he just raised with queens under the gun. He was called by Karai Aldemir in the pink mask. In the vest with ace jack, Osgert Sichilmish. Now the button, Spanish pro Ramon Calias with ace queen of hearts. Elias makes the call. Now David Cabrera in the small blind, 32-year-old, also originally from Spain, now lives in Mexico. Here are the two Spaniards sitting next to each other, Calias and Cabrera. 
born two months apart in 1988. Cabrera's 10th straight main event. This will be his best result. He's got ace jack suited, and he's going to three bet to 6.6 .6 million. Gets rid of Henry Park in the big blind. Cabrera committing most of his stack there. Medio now with the Queens. Not going anywhere. Now, when you put a chip on top of your cards, as Remedio just did, neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor the Rio losing power will prevent you from playing the hand. <laughs> 12 million. Josh 12 million. says 12. He would need to make a 12.4 to make it a legal raise into Kalias. Kalias thinking about this fire heading his way. He does fold, so it's all good as Cabrera snap calls with Ace Jack, and he's behind the Queens. Ace Jack, Ace Jack. Queens, Queens. Remedio's rail not necessarily as poker savvy as it is cocktail savvy. <laughs> All of Cabrera's chips in the middle, one third of Remedio's stack at risk. Now the flop, Cabrera at risk. And he gets a little aid from that flop. <clears throat> Queen's still good, turn card now. Well, that is helpful, but not enough for Cabrera. So Cabrera now looking for a jack or an ace on the river to stick around. The river, another deuce. <laughs> Remedio and company celebrate. Cabrera receives some consoling from his fellow countrymen before exiting in 21st place. Yeah, nicely done, David Cabrera. His third consecutive main event cash. Yo, dear GG. Nice and ready, move nice aside, point. Ark Onokul, there's a new boss in town with 44.2 million. Uh, at least this chip leader wears his baseball cap correctly. If Remedio's rail sounds familiar, it should. They've been loud, supportive, and exactly what you'd expect from an Arizona State grad. Not always easy to see the action from the sidelines, so Josh has been helping them. My crowd is like, so clueless. Oh yeah, Jack to the spade. Let's go. Uh, Norman, I remember you telling me there was quite a cheering section when you passed your driver's test on the fourth try. Confirm or deny? I high-fived every single one of them after I successfully parallel parked. <laughs> we'll keep it at this table. Karai Aldemir, the chip leader at the end of day five, will play ace eight of spades from early position. The blind's at 200,000, 400,000 with a 400K big blind ante. Over two. Ramon Kalias on the button. He calls with pocket trades. And we park the chip leader to start day seven, not the chip leader now. Gets out of the way. Now Remedio will fold as well. Players going on a short break, so they're walking away from this German and Spanish heads-up skirmish. Aldemir flops two pair, but those kings there might keep him in check. Aldemir fresh off an audition for the next Masterpiece Theater. Mm -hmm. And boy, these fellows with the best sets of hair, maybe you'll ever see this late at the main event. <laughs> and you're right, I love the sweater. Check, check. Aldemir moved to Vienna, Austria in 2012. Met Fedor Holtz the next year before Fedor really took off. And Fedor, a big influence on Karai Aldemir's game. Just one day I want to be a fly on the wall in that German Vienna poker factory. The, the fascinating thing with both these guys when they are thinking, you can actually see their hair growing. <laughs> check, check again. River card, and wow, Aldemir can breathe easier now with aces full. Kalias playing the board, and it could be fun because the board's really strong. Well, Aldemir did have a hammerlock on this pre-river. Now he knows he's got the nuts, unless Kalias slow played quad kings. Aldemir now putting chips together. 
And that is a million seven. One million seven hundred. And no insta fold from Kalias. He, he might think Aldemir is trying to steal this one. Aldemir had checked two straight streets. Kalias does not want to give up any of his stack lightly. Well, he's not one to do anything lightly. Good player. Oh, wow. That's a raise, Norman, to four million. Ill-timed by Kalias, like when I asked for a raise from my CNBC boss a week before he fired me. <laughs> now Aldemir with the strongest full house one could have. As you mentioned, only one hand beats him. Green light time. He's trying to size the re-raise to get a call, but Kalias won't be putting another penny into this pot. But I like the creativity of Kalias's raise. Yeah, he says all in. And Kalias quickly gives it up, and Aldemir moves over 40 million chips again. The masked librarian continues to build. <laughs> At the expense of Ramon Kalias. A break for the players now, maybe just in time for Ramon, as we move towards the 2021 main event final table of nine. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. It's a fast paced city and the player breaks. Well, those can be fast too. Apparently too fast for, you guessed it, Jareth East. Late to start day seven. Now coming back late for the resumption of play. Andreas Kniep also late. I thought rocket launches were programmed to the millisecond. You know, you never see players missing the start of the second half of the Super Bowl, but poker is a different animal. If Ryo looks familiar, well, you have a really good memory. He made our main event coverage back in 2018, hanging out and cheering on our old good friend, Antonio Esfandiari. Where did they take Antonio? Did, <laughs> did Kniep send him to the moon and forget to bring him back? Did, did he leave him at Burning Man with a lifetime supply of biodegradable wet wipes? <laughs> Antonio finished 132nd that year, Kniep 173rd. So now it's East and Kniep in a big confrontation. East shoved the river, putting Kniep to the ultimate test. If that's the reverse there, that's a pretty good one. Ryo's got the best hand, but this is for his main event. Okay, the only reason why I could call is because you think I'm buffing you on the top. I would love to know you better. <laughs> All right, I'm afraid of ace 10, jack plus. This is where I think it helps to be a theoretical physicist rather than a rocket scientist. Wow, I hate myself, but I think I have to. Oh, I guess. Nice he makes the call correctly. <laughs> Kniep doubles up. What a call. Good job. Thank you. I thought you didn't have a cool one. Huh? I thought you didn't have a cool one. You thought I was funny? Right. I thought you had a cool one. 5 million, 550. Yeah. I thought, I thought to myself when I made the call, I proofed up that. 550. 550. What a decision for his main event life. Well, we need more rocket scientists making tough calls on the river. Otherwise, the planet is doomed. East did everything he could. Back to table two where Karai Aldemir is only playing ace-8 suited, I guess. Ace-high best after the flop against two others, including Jung Woo, who checked with 8-6. You know, I'd like to see Kniep's wooden necktie paired with Aldemir's sweater. I oh. think they match well. Aldemir. Now with the bet, 900,000. Kalias with a pretty hand. Kalias once was a fitness trainer. He likes to play a game called Padel, P-A-D-E-L. Google it. Looks like a, a fun racket game, not to be confused with paddle tennis. Kalias with two overcards to the board. 
Looks like he's going to stick around at least. Yep. Yeah. He calls for 900,000. Wu gets out of the way. Heads up now. Again between these two. Kalias keeps trying to hunt down Aldemir, and he's running out of hunting chips. Ten of clubs on the turn, helping both Aldemir with a flush draw. Kalias an open ender, but he's still behind. What an action card on the turn, like in Masterpiece Theater. <laughs> the first time Aldemir played poker was New Year's Eve 2006. He did not know the rules. He thought four, five, six, seven was a straight, and he won that night. Maybe he thinks he has a flush right now. <laughs> Just a flush draw, betting a bit more than half the pot into Kalias. Well, Kalias with King, Queen, Jack, 10 at the moment, maybe he thinks he has a string. Mm, could be. It might just be me, but looking at these two guys, they seem to exude a feeling that they know much more about what's going on than anybody around them. Well, if we're sitting next to them, that's a stone cold yeah, mortal lock. Right? Kalias has been on the downslide lately, but he commits more chips here. Using the single purple chip worth five million. He'll get change. All right, 11 and a half million in the middle. River card, queen of hearts. And now that hits Kalias, his queens are best. Yeah, Aldemir misses, then again, Maybe he does think he made a flush on the turn, mm. so he'll bet here. It's all about self-belief. Kalias didn't get what he was looking for, but he still pairs his queen, and that is best. Aldemir thinking about how he can win this hand now. Aldemir reaching for the yellows, and that's enough to put Kalias all in, Norman. <sighs> Suffering succotash. What a weird hand, Lon. We just saw Kniep make a great call on the river with his main event at stake. Can Kalias do the same here? Ace-King got there for Broadway. Ace-Queen got there. The stack of Ramon Kalias. It would all have to go in the middle to make this call. You saw him squirm just a little bit as Karai put out that bet. If he folds, he still has 14 big blinds. Top pair for Kalias, but so much danger. And he does fold! And a rare fist pump from Karai Aldemir. Great bet. And Kalias' tough day seven continues. Wow. Aldemir squaring off against the top Spanish pro and wins with the worst hand. When your friends tell you poker is all luck, show them that hand. Wow. Just wow. It really is a show within a show. This is a cash game. These people are going at it for real money. But then this sub layer of, and we get to know why. Karai knew he got Ramon to lay down the best hand. Aldemir is in the zone when he's in the pot. It's as if he's already won at the main event payouts presented by Cuervo. There are no strangers. A pay jump nearing for those in the final 18. And of course, 8 million for first place. You know, something happened on day three to the then short stack Karai Aldemir to light a fire under him. He has been playing in control, playing with purpose, playing to win. Back on day six, he could do no wrong. First, taking out Christopher Dowling. With no regard for human life, Aldemir sent Chris Dowling out into the Las Vegas desert. The good doctor, Ronald Jensen, followed Dowling. With no regard for human life, he then sent Ron Jensen out into the Las Vegas desert. I hope one of you takes home $8 million. His momentum carried into day seven as he took out local pro Jesse Lonis. With no regard for human life, Aldemir then sent Jesse Lonis out into the Las Vegas desert. Robert Mitchell could not overcome Aldemir either. With no regard for human <laughs> life, he then sent Robert Mitchell out into the Las Vegas desert. Well, they don't track stats in poker like they do in baseball or football, but it's safe to say when Aldemir has a player all in, they're probably going out. 
still at Aldemir's table, playing six-handed right now with the field at 20 players. The other two tables, seven-handed. Under the gun, so Chomish with deuces. You don't think about pocket deuces. You just close your eyes and play them. <laughs> or close your eyes and fold them. Kalias next in line with 10-4 off. Kalias wishes he could close his eyes and make day seven go away. Mm. Might want to take a moment after folding that hand to Aldemir. Well, he's taking the moment and does get rid of it to Henry Park. Now the big stack with 29 and a half million to begin this day seven, but that was 16 million chips ago. King, queen, and a raise. Remedio folds the button. Wu small blind, Aldemir in the big blind. 51 million in his stack, five, four off. Uh, sure, he's getting four and a half to one to call here, and it, it'll just cost him about 1% of his stack, but if I'm Karai, I take the hand off. It's five, four off, and you're developing a reputation as a merciless killer. <laughs> ah, Karai's gonna call. <laughs> King, queen for Park. Here's the flop. 8-9 deuce. Not real good for either, and that's usually good for Karai. And Sachomas would have flopped a set. Oh, I right. knew he should have played those deuces. Check, check. Three of clubs. Aldemir with a straight draw. Park with a better flush draw. I don't mind Park not seat betting the flop, but in this case, it likely would have ended the hand. Park. Trying to do what so many have failed to do. Get chips off Karai Aldemir. Karai puts together 925,000. Aldemir definitely has the range advantage here. That board more likely to hit his hand in the big blind than Park's hand. Now, what do you know about range advantage? You just learned about continuation bet last year. Thanks for uh, bursting my credibility with the viewers, <laughs> Stretch. <laughs> Well, Park's going to come along. River card, five of hearts. Uh, welcome to Karai Aldemir's universe as he flips the script on Henry Park. Even when he misses, he hits. Karai looking for the straight, and he picks up the pair. He now checks. Park, two yellows. That's two million. Park takes a stab at it. Can Aldemir call with third pair? Can Aldemir call with third pair? <laughs> yes, he can. This Aldemir would throw water on a drowning man. <laughs> Oh, Henry Park, the latest to feel the sting from Karai Aldemir. You look at his stack, purple times two, a whole lot of yellow is poker chip code for a huge stack. Aldemir cannot be stopped. 20 players remain at the 2021 World Series of Poker main event to remain in the broadcast booth, though if I had my druthers... Hey, get in line, pal. I've got druthers, too. I'm Lon McCarron with Norman Chad. We're witnessing the Karai Aldemir show here on day seven. Aldemir's going to sit this one out. Kalias with pocket nines. And he just seems like a beaten man right now. He began the day with a top ten stack. Now, not so much, and he is all in for about five and a half million. Eleven bigs. Park folded. Remedio with ace queen makes the call to put Kalias at risk. I have no doubt these pocket nines will not hold up. You want to bet? I, I don't gamble. You've been married three times. That's not gambling, that's hopeless optimism. <laughs> all right, here we go. Kalias all in after what has been a painful day seven. And boom goes the nine for Kalias. Kalias had been very unlucky here on day seven. He's been losing from ahead and just missing on all the big moments. He doesn't even seem comfortable here at 97%. Eight of hearts brings some outs for Josh Remedio. Yeah, now a jack would send Ramon Kalias home. Ramon, confident, 
but rightly concerned. One card to come. The river card, tray of clubs, a nice and needed double for Coleus. I hope Ramon is smiling under there. He's allowed to be happy. He's allowed <laughs> to celebrate winning a big flip. Yeah, he's got almost 12 million to work with now after doubling through Remedio. You know, Norman, his fifth recorded poker cash was worth five million bucks. Your fifth was worth $610, my fifth $700 and a win. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. All right, let's check in on our feature mm, table at center stage, London Poker Pro. Lewis Spencer just three bet all in with a diminished stack and pocket kings. Vasu Amarapu has ace nine off suit and twice the stack. Amarapu, alleged 36-year-old IT <laughs> professional from Massachusetts. Two players in need, with Spencer at risk. Amarapu puts about half his stack in with ace nine off, I don't know. Amarapu, the rec player from Boston, has been treading water throughout day seven. Spencer at risk, he says he's improved a lot watching Doug Polk's instructional content. I've improved a lot as a broadcaster watching Doug Polk in a tank top. <laughs> a critical run out of cards for both about to happen. And there is an ace, and Spencer suddenly sees his Kings become a 10 to 1 underdog. Brutal. Imagine Mike Mattiso taking this beat. On second thought, don't. No. Spencer packing up. Turn card, another ace, but Spencer's saving outs remain the same. Lewis Spencer needs a king and a king only, or he is wamboozled. The river card, the four of hearts. What a performance by this eSports pro here in the poker world. His previous best tournament cash, $2,800. He'll walk out today with about 242 large. Well played. He was 70% to have a playable stack, 30% to go home. Sometimes you go home. Nice run, Lewis Spencer. Everyone making day seven thinks they'll make the final table until their kings get cracked by ace nine offsuit. Lewis Spencer out in 20th. Day seven is giddiness mixed with tension and a dash or two of trepidation. Shaken, not stirred. Folded to Wu on the button with pocket tens. All in. And he says all in proudly. 36 year old Southern California pro. Automatic shove from the button for Wu. Aldemir in the small blind with Osger Sachimlish still to act in the big blind. Aldemir with ace jack of hearts. No, of course Aldemir has a hand in the small blind. Aldemir with options. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he yeah, wants yeah. to uh, go heads up with his ace jack. Sachimlish folds and Wu at risk with the made hand. I wonder if Aldemir knows the names of any of the people he dumps out <laughs> onto the street broken and, and penniless. Hello. Woo, ahead, so but far. plenty of trepidation that I just mentioned. The N95 mask versus the pretty pink mask. Woo, again, looking to do what so few have done, take chips away from Karai Aldemir. So here we go. Woo at risk with the tens. And a jack in the door, and the buzzsaw continues to turn for Aldemir. Who couldn't see that coming? If Aldemir had any class, he'd give the sweater off his back to Wu. Uh, Wu's already putting it on. Turn card. Uh, close, but not close. It looked like a 10. Well, it's going to have to be a 10, or Jiyoung Wu is toast on a stick. One card to come, perhaps, in Wu's main event life. The river card. Tray of clubs and Aldemir right. does it again. Right. 19th place for Wu and a sweet payout. So now there are 18 players left. How can Aldemir have nearly one fifth of the chips? I want a recount. He is laser focused on the top prize. 18 players left. The payout jumps up to 305,000. Average stack 22 million. Back now to our main featured table, and one Mr. Chase Bianchi. Open raise from the button with Ace Queen. One blind five. Who raises three times the big blind on the button anymore? 
Bianchi must be watching old World Series of Poker shows. Ooh, that was some of your best work. Preach, brother. If they had Poker Broadcaster of the Year back in those days, I would have retired the award. How about me? Uh, nobody remembers who finishes second. Good for you. Here's the flop. Heads up. And it's middle pair for Amarapu, top pair for Bianchi. Amarapu checks. Bianchi comes out with 2.2 million. Didn't Antonio Esfandiari used to tell us it's hard to make a mm. pair? No wonder he's out of poker. <laughs> no diamonds out there for Vasu. He'll come along with middle pair. Amarapu should step lightly here, though he is playing with Lewis Spencer's chips. Turn card. Ooh, a jack, and boom, Amarapu hits Jack's up. He checks again, as does Bianchi now. Seven of clubs, and there's Bianchi's flush to take the hand back. Runner, 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 runner. <laughs> Amarapu checked, and now with a bigger stack by 10 million, Bianchi bets three and a half million. If I knew anything about bet sizing, I would like Chase Bianchi's bet sizing here. <laughs> well, Bianchi had so many outs to make his hand after the turn. He does get a call from Amarapu, and Vasu will pay him off. That river call is what we in the business call ambitious. I am in the business, therefore I can decide what is and what is not yeah. ambitious. Thank you, Lon. <laughs> That hand began while Wu was being knocked out. So now with 18 players still in the hunt, there's going to be a redraw for seats at the final two tables. Half of these players will make the prestigious final table at the 2021 World Series of Poker. Same city, same tournament, new seating arrangement. A redraw at 18 gives players a chance to see everyone in the tournament, maybe swap positions, or just another chance to stretch the legs. Our new feature table is a beauty. Aldemir, Corneth, Park, Coleus, it's stacked. And everyone showed up on time. Excellent. Yeah, right? Aldemir is still the chip leader by plenty with a new wardrobe. Oh, the bandit is finally maskless. Pocket sevens, min raised to one million. Kalias still on Aldemir's left, folds. Chance Corneth now. Don't ever change, Chance. Your kids will never disobey you if you look like this. Chance controlled his table for a while. He was at 30 million earlier today, 16 and a half million now. And there is Halverson. What is he wearing, Norman? We have to address this. Uh, I think that's either a, a Rorschach test or he's trying out for a zebra musical. <laughs> oh. He will fold. Might be a little trepidation to get involved when you have a brand new set of table mates. This late in the main event, Demosthenes Kyriopoulos. Small blind gets rid of it. East, Jareth East and the big blind King Jack. He'll make the call with two picture cards. He'll see a flop, and it's a raggedy flop. Aldemir still ahead with his pocket sevens. Both East and Aldemir met a poker pro when they went to university, and lo and behold, both became poker pros themselves. Th that they couldn't have met a faith healer? <laughs> Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be poker pros. Aldemir, after the check by East, bets 775. Now, I don't like that Aldemir traded in a mask for shades. And now East with two overs to everything, but still behind. Makes the call. The Brit and the German will see a turn card. Ace of diamonds. Checked again to Aldemir with his leading pocket sevens. You know, we started with 6,650 players. I'd swear that East has been behind in 90% of the hands he's played so far, yet he's still here with 18 left. It feels like a magic trick. Feels like hope for the rest of us. Aldemir checks back now. 
River Carta, another six, another diamond. Jareth East, ladies and gentlemen, late to start the day, late after the dinner break, late to catch a card on this hand. And this much I know, if he makes a play at this pot, Aldemir will call. Wow, not so quick to check. You might be right, Norman. Don't do it, son. Don't do it. Oh, yeah. Yellows and lavenders equaling 4.4 million. Wow. That, that's a gutsy pot size bluff. And he's only left himself six big blinds behind. Maybe Aldemir will fold. I might be wrong. I got a feeling that's not the first time you've ever said that. Yeah, good for you. Aldemir does fold, and East takes it down. Karai is human. There's hope for the other 17. Wow, he has just done the unthinkable. Bluffed Karai, Aldemir, bravo, Mr. East. Indeed. All right, over to the other group of nine for you crossword fans. That's called an Inead. Ryo Kniep probably knows that. The SpaceX rocket scientist calls from the small blind with pocket jacks. Gets a little sneaky there in the small blind. Oh, Lococo also with a monster in the big blind. Ace, queen suited for the Argentinian rapper. Papo MC. Has the bigger stack. All right. Going to cost a little more to stick around. A raise to 1.7 million. Kniep gets what he wants. I would just knock on the wooden tie and go all in. <laughs> That is an option for Ryo here. All in. And there it is. 30 bigs, shoves, and this will be for about two-thirds of Lococo's stack. Looks like a delayed snap call. We watch Ryo struggle with his all-in call to double through East. Now he's put Lococo to this decision. I think it's a delayed snap call. Not for all of Lococo's chips. About two-thirds, and I think it's a delayed snap call. There's the delayed snap call, and Ryo looking for his jacks to hang on against the two overcards. You'd think a rocket scientist would know that you can't win with pocket jacks, and you think that a battle rapper would know you can't win with ace-queen. Sean. It was nice playing until here. Let's, huh? Let's, uh, I will not... I will, I will. <laughs> Ryo already saying his farewells. Here's the flop. And an ace right there in the kitchen for Papo. Ryo sees the writing on the wall. Oh, my God. Now you're a smart guy. You can figure a way out of this, Ryo. Looking for help. All right. He got it. A new WSOP rule. You shouldn't be able to call for cards when you're ahead. Period. I like that one. Kniep needs a king or a jack. It's the tray of hearts. And Papo MC gets Ryo. You never want it to end, but the main event is over. For Andreas Kniep. I'm going to miss the, the man, bunnish, wooden tied, beltless <laughs> rocket scientist. Yep. A nice run in 2018. Improved greatly upon this year. 18th place for 305,000. Andreas Ryo Kniep, thanks. You made it fun. Kniep just got knocked off this table. Now, Nikola Vassier's all in with ace nine. Sean Regazzini called with king five of hearts. They both catch on the flop. Vassier's best with aces. Make you interesting? Just a four of hearts. Nine of hearts? Turn card now. Oh, and another king for Regazzini. And now the 28-year-old Vasiers will need an ace or his main event is over. 
Ah, he's already pushing the chips. Vasiers looking for a saving card. Does not get it. Hope on the flop, dashed on the turn, out on the river, 17th place for Nicolas Vasiers. Ah, he was a kid with a dream. The short stack laddered up to a payout of 305,000. Ragazzini with a chip average of about 24 million now. Okay, a quick look at the leaderboard brought to you by Caesars Sportsbook. It's been this way for a while, Karai Aldemir and everyone else. Three stacks in the 40 million range, including Argentinian rapper Alejandro Lococo. And what an international field we have remaining. Eight Americans, three Brits, seven nations represented. Jeff Platt is with the recently departed rocket scientist. Well, Ryo, what a, what a run, what a ride. Describe what kind of emotions are, are running through you at this point. Well, first of all, I'm happy that from uh, us getting to know each other what my real name is yeah. to here, yeah, we almost feel like, you know, we have spent some time together, so that's uh, happy. It uh, makes me be part of this family in a way, you know, like this, uh, whatever you call this, this crazy uh, yeah, experience. And um, you feel part, part of it, right, for, for some time when you're part of this seven-day run. So um, hard, to, hard to realize now what I'm losing to be, <laughs> you know, ejected of the fam from the family. Um, but um, fantastic run. Uh, I'm obviously a super lucky guy to even be here. You have to realize it's over. It's over. And um, and it, it will hurt. It will hurt some time. I mean, of course. And then uh, uh, I think I hope at some point soon I will realize you know how fantastic it was and be gladly looking at, back at the videos and at the pictures and uh, you know the interviews with you and. <laughs> And in the end, you know, it's funny, in the end, I finally met all the people that I, you know, played against. I mean, you know, the last, and that was, again, you know, it was like a, it sounded like a family. It was, of course, a dream to be part of the November 9, the real November 9, uh, but um, I was part of the November 18. It was great having you here. It was great getting to know you. Congratulations. Thank you, Jeff. Night. It was a pleasure. Great meeting you. Kanip is out, but his chips live on in a way in that man stack. Alejandro Lococo riding high as is German chip leader Karai Aldemir. What a performance so far. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. At the end of the night, there will be two types of poker players. Those who have run deep at the main event and those who have made a main event final table. It's a life-changing night for the final 16. Some will become footnotes. Others could write their own championship story. Back for continuing coverage of the 2021 World Series of Poker. Lon McCarron with Norman Chad in the booth. Jeff Platt on the sideline, 16 players trying to navigate their way to the final table. Brady Bunch take one is the feature table. Karai Aldemir in the upper left is the overwhelming chip leader. Overwhelming chip leader is an understatement. He's reached into every other player's pocket and has their Caesars reward card and their social security number. Brady Bunch take two, the secondary table, lower right, Chance Corner, the most well-known pro remaining. Also known as Chance the Rapper. Oh no, I'm sorry. The Rapper is at the bottom left, Popo MC. And I'm not sure who the rest of those guys are. I think I owe two of them money. 16 players are left, two tables in play. The average stack, 49 big blinds. As we see on the Solve for Why tournament summary, the main event stays deep for quite a while. Let's get right to the action at our main feature table. In the dark hoodie is Jareth East, having his best ever main event, the English pro needing chips and with pocket aces here. Yeah, it feels as if East has been crawling through the pipes for days, looking for daylight. He has been low stacked. He deserves these aces. Just a min raise from the button looking for a partner. Henry Park, the once and long ago chip leader at the start of day seven. Now the fifth shortest stack gets rid of his hand. It's a million. Arc on a cool in the big blind. As you mentioned, the men raise, so with the big blind discount, only half a million more for Onokul to play his unsightly hand. And he does throw in one more big blind to go heads up against the aces. And there is a seven for Onokul, but that's all. He checks. Well, Onokul does flop middle pair. That's good news for East. He's got a fish on the hook. Looks like it might be broiled fish with a little butter. Jareth East. 650, not protecting his aces with a great deal of vigor. 
Well, he starts to reel in his fish slowly, giving Onacle a great price to call, better than five to one. Yeah. Onacle call. does check call for 650. And if I'm east, I might want some, you know, grilled asparagus and steamed spinach with this fish. Mm. Very healthy meal. Sounds good. <coughs> a little over four million in the pot. Jack on the turn. He's still good here. Onacle checks again with his pair of sevens. East dropped out of school going for his masters because the first guy he met there was a poker pro who taught him how to play and also taught him how to fish. East. Those are worth a million each. And he checks back. Oh, I don't know about that. Ooh. And oh, that is not good for the aces. Ark just scored two pair. You know, sometimes the fish wriggles off the hook and attacks the fisherman. That's <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, this fish is wearing a mask. He can barely breathe. On a cool. Looks like he is coming to life, Norman, out of the grave. And that is a pot size plus bet. And a quick call from the aces, and the aces are cracked. Oh, East can't like it. Fishing is tougher than it looks. I was thinking all in, but then I'm like, who goes all in at the main event for 3x pot? The rich get richer. Was not 3x pot, 2x pot. Would have worked. Thanks. The Russian-born Las Vegas pro feeling good with more than 100 bigs. East now in a serious short stack, something George Holmes is very familiar with. From one big blind, this Atlanta resident is using every skill he's honed from his limited tournament experience and his weekly home game. Definitely not a full-time player, but poker is a big part of my life. I play weekly back in Atlanta, and it's really a recreation, more of a social event. Definitely not a professional, though, and don't plan on becoming a professional poker player. I want to play a ton of tournaments. Uh, it's surreal. I mean, I guess the, the schedule in itself doesn't lend to you actually sitting back, relaxing, and experiencing and taking all this in. Um, so it's just, I really won't have time to sit down and think about it until I'm done. I'm just trying to take it all in as much as I can. 2019 was my first World Series of Poker entry. I did pretty good, I ran well, and I made it to 213. Um, and I think the payout was around 50K. So that was pretty exciting. And coming back here with a bigger group of friends this year, I wasn't expecting anything. And here we are. Who knows where I, where I get off the train this go around. George Holmes is the main event. Don't need to be a pro. Never give up. Anything can happen. Yeah, aces happen. Holmes has them now and saw Chance Corneth open the pot from under the gun. A raise to a million two with ace king. This amateur Holmes now with 34 million chips from the 475,000 he had earlier on this day seven. Holmes now three bets with the aces. You might hear Holmes' home game buddy on the rail, Gordon Davis, who keeps shouting out, show them the lights, George. Back to the aggressive Corneth, who will test you on every street possible. Be interesting to see <laughs> if Chance Corneth can see the light here. Mm. You know, earlier on day seven, Corneth flopped a flush with Ace Queen suited against Pocket Aces to knock out Dennis Predvor. Chance taking a little inventory of his stack and Holmes' stack. Oh, wow. All in with the ace king. Cool. And it's not cool. going to take any time for George Holmes and the legend of Holmes taking on a new dimension now. A disaster for Chance Corneth. He goes with his read and with 42 bigs in his stack, he's up against one of the two hands that absolutely crush him, pocket aces. And here is the flop. And boom, just like that, it is over. Chance Corneth drawing dead on the flop and out. The three-time bracelet winner is gone. With that ace flopping, he probably would have gotten it all in there anyway. It was great playing with you all. And amazingly, George Holmes is the chip leader. 
A gracious exit in 16th place for Chance Corneth, but he's got to feel like he left so much promise unfulfilled. His impressive style got him here, and he should feel proud. He led a group of strong pros into the top 100, but 16th was the end of the road for Chance Corneth. He's with Jeff Platt right now. Well, Chance, on your long list of poker accomplishments, where would you rank this one? Uh, pretty high. I mean, it was so much fun. I enjoyed every minute of it. And, uh, you know, a little sad it came up short, but uh, maybe next year. You walk us through that last hand, a little bit of a cooler spot, yeah? Uh, yeah, so George has become really active. Uh, he's playing quite well. Um, I opened a 1.2 under the gun. Um, he three bet cutoff, I think, to uh, 3 million. And uh, I ended up jamming 25, 26 million. Um, I could have just flatted pre, um, and in hindsight, I wish I would have. Um, but, you know, sometimes you make a mistake. For someone who has played so many poker tournaments, what separates this one from all the rest? I mean, this is the white whale, you know? Like, everyone wants to be Moby Dick, and uh, who knows who it's going to be today. Great way to sum it up. Thanks so much for the time. Appreciate My it, pleasure, Corneth seemed destined for the final table much of this main event. George Holmes seemed destined for the parking lot when he had one big blind left. My goodness. Already one of poker's greatest stories. Josh Remedio, Sean Ragazzini to the flop. Ragazzini on the right, ace jack. He scores top pair and a whole lot of nothing for Remedio and his queen 10. Remedio likes powerlifting, strike one. He likes video gaming, strike two. He graduated with a finance degree, strike three. But he's a nice guy, so we will excuse all of that. Well, the pre-flop raiser. That's one million, quarter of the pot. Ragazzini is into crypto, strike one. He likes adventure sports, strike two. He loves wakeboarding, strike three. But he's a nice guy, so we'll excuse all of that. Wakeboarding, what's wrong with that as he makes the call? I don't like waking up, I don't like surfboards. Oh my goodness. I actually did a wakeboarding show one time, no surprise. Remedio did not pick up any equity on the turn. He picked up some pallbearers for his hand. He is drawing dead. Two point two million from Josh Remedio. He's got Moxie. He's also going to have 2.2 million less in the stack <laughs> right. when his hand is over. And that's just a call from Ragazzini. River card. Another ace. Josh drawing more dead. Is that a thing? Yeah, it's more dead. Okay. You know, I never liked the fanny pack or the backpack. And now the shoulder pack Josh has. I just use my pockets. What do you have, like a poker room locker business you're trying to sell? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good idea. It is a good idea. <laughs> uh, schlepping around this stuff. After the check by Josh, Sean bets. Josh folds. Ragazzini up to 37 million. You know, I like the bet. I like the snap fold. Ragazzini up to 61 big blinds. Remedio with a similar stack after yeah, was, taking that hit. I was trying to figure out a size, so <laughs> that's why it took so long. No, no. I'm like, how much should I bet? You can take as long as you'd like. Yeah, no, normally I'd. Might take that long, but. Oh, I got you. Just, uh, yeah. It's more thinking like, man, I'm so thirsty. I like want, <laughs> want to turn around, grab some water. <laughs> well, the red stripe indicates the current bust out payout brought to you by Cuervo. There are no strangers. Top nine guaranteed 1 million USD. In seed one, Turkish rec player Oshkur Seychumis. There's Yankee fans everywhere. He's got ace queen. Mitch Halverson open for 6.3 million, 100K short of all in. Any other takers? Aldemir with ace queen. Wow, he gets rid of it. You know, these two short stacks destined to collide. Yep. All the chips there in for Halverson. Yeah, I know Halverson is all in, Lon, but we again have to address the elephant in the room, no? One of the best in the game in Mitch's corner, Ali Amshurovich. Long time. Sechomis already ahead, but that's a very pleasant one time. Here's the flop. And one time it is another player busting flop. Halverson drawing dead and out. 
You flop two aces, that seems like two times. And I know he's just been knocked out, but what is Mitchell Halverson wearing? Oh, 15th place, 380K for Mitch Halverson. D does he have a change of clothes in his backpack for when he leaves the Amazon? A moment to relish the moment for, say, Chilmish and company. <laughs> and for Halverson, it's back to Ice Station Zebra. Well, certainly cause for celebration. Looking more, though, like a TikTok gone wrong, but it's a big moment and he's having fun. We'll give Oscar Sachomish a pass. He's got chips. A site we've grown accustomed to, the Rio and the iconic Las Vegas Strip. We're playing down to nine here on day seven. One player with the inside track to a big stack at the final table is Karai Aldemir, a poker player who got hooked early. I remember not liking poker the first time I saw it on German TV and I wanted to watch like football or something and I thought why are they showing cards on TV? But uh, after my first time playing and getting lucky on like some, some New Year's party, <laughs> I thought okay, this is kind of fun. And it's kind of fun to raise as Karai has done with Ace Four of Hearts, testing the resolve of Jareth East on the button holding King Queen. And he says let's dance. Eight bigs, not much wiggle room for East. He got dinged holding aces. Now it's all up for grabs. Onical with nines. Now, Onical now with the realest hand of the three. The realest hand? Is that an analytical term? No, no you're an analytical term, you boombox worm. I'm not even going to ask you about that. Clowns to the left of me. Jokers to the right. Here I am, stuck in the middle with pocket nines. And he does make the call for 4.6 million. Aldemir now, the original Razor, was suited ace four. Remember, Onical with the realist hand. Yeah, so I've heard. I'm all in. Yeah, he's cold. East updates his rail. <laughs> and I believe also Lon on where we're at right now. Indeed. I love the updates. And Aldemir gives it up, so Jareth East walking the line here with all his chips at risk, holding King Queen against the Nines. Need to win King, King Queen v 99. I should have shoved the Ace Jack, man. Wait, what do you have? Yeah. Got King Queen. King Queen. But well, I'm winning every race at the moment. I've got a lot. I keep winning every pot. Yeah. Yeah. I keep, I keep winning every all-in, like I'm going to... I need to lose one. Oh, a king for East! One time. Come on, one time, one time. One time! Can you call for one time after you've hit your card? Who folded any nine? No, I do. Oh. Doesn't make a difference. <laughs> Doesn't make a difference, Lon. I'll explain that to you later. Onical still needs a nine to knock out East. Yes. River card, a uh, queen, pay the man is double up. I told you I'm going to win it. Like, I can, like, no one can knock me out. <laughs> he never has many chips, but no one can knock him out. Literally. Gotta love a man with confidence. So, Anakul and others will have to wait for the next elimination. No doubt many of them thinking about that bracelet, a status symbol, a nice 500K bobble on top of their main event win. Hey, I've seen that exact main event bracelet at K Jewelers for $799, please. <laughs> East with about half the average stack, but still a seat in the game. Kalia seems a bit down in the mouth. And why not? He was seventh out of 36 to start the day, and now he's almost all in with Queen 10 of Diamonds. He had 11 big blinds left. Sachilmus sitting with 30 bigs in the small blind. King Queen suited. What in? And Osger says. Here are all my chips. Kiriopoulos in the big blind. DK does fold back to Kalias. 
700,000 behind, and yeah, he makes the call all in. Papaz kız sinek. Kız on var, kız on. Kız on. Kız onla tuzak kurmuş. Onlu gelecek, eyvah. Is he allowed to speak Turkish while wearing a New York Yankees cap? <laughs> if he paid for the hat, the Yankees are fine. And the former fitness trainer finally showing some pep in his step. Kalias has absorbed blow after blow here on day seven. He hasn't caught a single break. Is Queen Tin at risk against the king queen of Sechilmas? And Kalias drawing very slim. Turkey and Spain. Opposite ends of Europe on opposite ends of that flop. <laughs> Coleus needs it now and he doesn't get it. That's that. Say <laughs> Chilmish wins another pot and the field is down another player. Happy winner <laughs> and a gracious loser. Osger works the room. Kalias bids farewell before collecting $380,000. See, Chumash swells his stack to more than $26 million. Nothing better than watching a rec player having this much fun on this big of a stage. And with a big smile, the Yankee fan retakes his seat at the featured table. And he wins the card protector of Kulius, too. Nice. So it's time to talk Turkey, Norman. Ozgur would become the first Turkish main event champ. No doubt the pride of 84 million fellow countrymen. We pay in U.S. dollars here, though, so I'll let him do the conversion. How many of those athletes do you know, partner? Okay, you tried to fool me with Ennis Freedom. That's Boston Celtic Ennis Cantor, who changed his name to Freedom. The others, I don't know if they're Olympic athletes or Turkish parliament members. <laughs> Table two, Basu Amarapu. Pocket sevens. All in. And short stack says all in for 13.5 million. Jack Oliver with not much more than Basu, ace queen of clubs. You got 22 bigs for Amarapu, 29 for Oliver. What do we know about this kid, Lon? Well, he went to University of Kent. It sounds prestigious, but on the best global university rankings, it's 541st. Well, that's pretty low for the Horned Frogs. <laughs> Maryland and UCSB ranked in the 60s, by the way. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And he says all in. So 32 million chips up for grabs. Any other takers here? And all in and a re-raise all in. You better have pretty good holdings. Ragazzini folds a small blind. Lococo suited queen, and he's out. So Amarapu is at risk. Salim! Carlos! All in. His rail should be closer. He shouldn't have to yell that loud. He's just yelling to Carlos. All right, here we go. Amrapu at risk with the sevens. And there is an ace in the flop. Oliver takes the lead. Still not sure if Amarapu is 22 or 62. We'll check his driver's license on the way out after that flop. Nine of diamonds now, Basu. Down to the river card or nothing. Amarapu's got to have a seven. River card, another king, not to be. Oliver makes ace queen work, eliminating Basu Amarapu in 13th place. What an amazing run, an amazing payout for the satellite winner in on 50 bucks. Oliver's having a good time too, just harder to detect. At the main event, it's time to dance or it's time to go home. Say Chilmish riding high at the expense of Kalias and Amarapu, actually 36 years old. Driver's license in hand, off to collect 470 grand. Back inside the Rio, just 12 players left, including Australian Sean Ragazzini, whose level head will be an asset down the stretch. I mean, I know it's like a big stage and everything and a lot of people watch, but at the end of the day, you just try and do your best and, you know, like let the cards be what they are. If you're thinking about too much of what it means and that, you take your mind off the game and it's not going to serve you very well. So just try and keep focused and play one hand at a time. It's cliche, but yeah, it's true. 
You know, Lon, I have played one hand at a time since 1998, and, well, I am losing one hand at a time. <laughs> Ragazzini jousting with George Holmes post-flop. Holmes with top pair. Ragazzini a wheel draw. Holmes was the pre-flop raiser. Holmes bet a million. Man, this might be a good time to give up this one hand. Not quite yet. Another million from Ragazzini. Nine on the turn. Holmes still a big favorite, 10 to 1. There's the check. Check back. Another nine on the river. Holmes is best. Ragazzini with nuclear squad douche. Maybe he didn't hear me. Holmes is best. Wow, look at this. I don't think it's going to work, but I like his pluck. Bluffing at the paired board, 3.8 million. Now, I might have overbet the, the pot, make it look like a bluff. This is such a small bet into Holmes' massive stack. Holmes has the luxury to be wrong with that stack. Well, I don't know why you stand up if you're just going to sit down again. When I stand up, I go somewhere. And he is not wrong, does make the call. Ragazzini pays him off and is left with just 17 million, while Holmes will stack nearly 72 million. <laughs> Man, that Gordon Davis is one loud rail for George Holmes. Back to the mothership, Karai Aldemir looking to join some elite company on Germany's all-time money list. The German contingent, deep and talented, not on that list. Stefan Sondheimer, Philip Grissom, Tobias Renkemeyer, George Danzer, Anton Morgenstern, and main event champs P.S. Hines and Hossein and Son. Blind on blind on a cool raise. Aldemir called. Here is the flop. Top and bottom pair for Aldemir. A gut shot for Ark. Aldemir smothers that flop with gravy and grits. What does that mean? Have you ever had gravy? Yep. Have you ever had grits? Yep. Then it's self-explanatory. Let's return to live action. Okay. Onical checked with his draw. Aldemir. Aldemir, thankful he befriended Fedor Holtz eight years ago. Has really helped his game. Thankful he defended his big blind. Bets a million eight. If I'm Onical, I'm folding this right now. <laughs> right. But, but the prevailing theory today seems to be if you have any outs at all or if there's some chance you can win with a bluff later, call the flop. That's a winning strategy for some. It is not for me. Mark will add his own 1.8 million to the pot, swelling it to 8.2 million. Turn card now. Seven of spades. Onacool picks up a flush draw now. Wow. Onacool peppers that turn with cilantro and paprika. All right, now what does that mean? And uh, now, no, I don't want to know. Never mind. We're good here. <sighs> Onical checks. Fine. Well, Aldemir's got to like this spot a lot. Queens. 5.8. And eights and 5.8 million. Onical, straight draw, flush draw, knock Aldemir out of the chip lead draw. Ooh, ooh, he's got some of the purples. That is a check raise draw. My goodness. I like this, I like this a lot. He yanks the sword out of Aldemir's hand. Maybe Onical slow play at a flop straight. He puts a lot of pressure on, say, a one pair hand. Of course, Aldemir doesn't have a one pair hand. On second thought, I don't think I like this at all. Don't you have to have a first thought to have a second thought? Good for you. There's the call. There's a pot of over 36 million. River card now. Queen of spades. Oh no, it's the card of death and the card of glory in the same package. Say it ain't so long. The worst card in the deck for Ark Onical. Full house for Aldemir, flush for Onical. Can Onical contain himself? He does check. And I assume Ark is looking for Aldemir to offer at it. Aldemir. Can 
do whatever he wants here. He's reaching big. He's reaching real big. Oh, there it is. This would put Onokul all in. Uh, and something seems wrong to put your opponent all in and bury your head. And, and I don't think there are any tells on the top of his hoodie. Mark Onokul with the decision for all his chips with a queen high flush. This will be the most <laughs> stupid way to bust the main. <laughs> This is a fun hand, Mr. Corey. I don't think you could ever guess what I got, man. If Anacol can find a fold, he'll still have 43 big blinds to work with, but I don't know if he can lay this down. Don't look at it again. Ugh. What a moment for the man who was the chip leader in the main event. Not too long ago, He quietly calls and quietly will be gone. What a hand to end Ark Onacle's main event. Ark would have been a good main event champ. Would have taken every picture, done every interview, eaten every burrito. Chipotle missed out too bad. 12th place worth 470 grand. What a payout. Aldemir just put an iron grip on this main event with that win. Yeah, I think Aldemir has more chips than are in play. He was likable. He was skillful. He was fun. Thank you, oh, Ark Onacool. I didn't know. I didn't know you said it full out there. I thought you won the pot. It happens. Well played, man. Good game. Good game, guys. Good luck. Eleven players remain, but thirty percent of all the chips in the main event belong to Karai Aldemir. This will be the most <laughs> stupid way to bust the man. <laughs> this is a fun hand, Mr. Corey. I don't think you could ever guess what I got, man. I think I have to call, bro. Have you ever wondered what professional poker players are really thinking? Interesting spot here. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Dude, the Carnitas burrito changed my whole day, man. You threw in the horchata, so. Ark called, and it was all over for his main event. Karai Aldemir with Ark's chips, and so Jeff Platt is with Ark right now. Let's talk overall tournament, overall experience. What does this kind of finish mean for you? Uh, it feels amazing. Um, I feel like I'm going to play better in every main from now on, just based on uh, this experience. So I'm very happy with how I did, and uh, I'll definitely be back next year. Absolute joy it's to watch you play. Thank, Thank you, you so much for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Seriously, is it possible for Aldemir to have all the chips before we get to the final <laughs> table? <laughs> Look at that. A 49 million chip gap between Aldemir and the field. George Holmes in second, and he's sitting next door to the mothership at table two. He folded. Everyone folded to the small blind, Sean Ragazzini. He has nearly 600K in live earnings. He knows his way around the felt pocket queens and a limp. Lococo, ace, ten of hearts. Ragazzini could have shoved there, but blind versus blind, he's looking for action, and he's going to get it from Papo MC. From a stack that's twice as big as his, and Ragazzini calls all in with the queens against ace, ten suited. Ragazzini got just what he was seeking, a chance to get his chips in the middle. Well, Ragazzini is a two-to-one favorite here, but still feeling some discomfort. <laughs> and what is that? You can say that. Queens. Two, just two queens on the flop. That's it. Yeah, yeah, no sweat, no sweat. No, we need to hold. <laughs> I, 
I think that's Popo MC asking the skies to rain down hearts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Regazzini at risk with the Queens. And there is a queen, wow. but hold the phone. Lococo with a Broadway draw. Holding, no jack. <laughs> Ragazzini got one queen, and that should reduce his discomfort some. Yeah, the nine does not help Papo. Ragazzini feeling a little more comfortable now. Just has to dodge a jack, which would make Broadway on the river. And oh, oh, is the jack on the river. Lococo gets there. Oh, oh, oh. The the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. Sean Ragazzini eliminated in brutal fashion, but 585 grand for 11th place will feel pretty good tomorrow. Papo MC orchestrates the perfect run out. He's one of the big stacks now. Alejandro Lococo. He's been quiet for a while, but not anymore. A four outer on the end makes him a serious contender, sending the Australian down under. Sometimes you just can't help but react. With big emotion, Alejandro Lococo earns tonight's Cuervo moment for his reaction to a huge river jack. The Argentinian rapper could be making his biggest hit right in front of our eyes for his emotion and celebration. Tonight's Cuervo moment goes to Lococo and his rail. During the break, the two remaining tables combine to one. The players will play 10-handed for one more elimination. Big money jump here. $415,000 between 10th and the final table. Top three stack for Lococo at just the right moment. You see the payouts. What a moment for these 10 survivors. Just a few maybe locks for the final table, but pens and needles really for everyone. Let's go. Norman, we've been watching this for about two decades, and it never gets old. It's so fresh with these guys so close to their dreams coming true. Aldemir, why not opening the pot to 1.6 million? Aldemir still with more chips than second and third combined. Speaking of second, George Holmes with the second biggest stack in the small blind. King five suited. Our home game hero. Bianchi still to act in the big blind. Holmes making a statement with a three bet. Holmes has no fear. Bianchi folds. And wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop, stop, stop. Hands stop, not stop, over. Stop. They forgot about Aldemir. How can you forget about Aldemir? Yeah, once Bianchi folded, a dealer pushed the pot to Holmes. And Aldemir, the opening razor, still had action. Well, it's a good thing Holmes did not throw his cards in the muck. That would have been ugly. How much, how much do you have approximately? I'm sorry. How, how much do you have again? 76. Thank you. Thank you. Aldemir probably wondering, is it possible for someone else here to have that many chips? <laughs> So Aldemir now, the initial razor, Call. reaches for calling chips. Two oh. chip leaders squaring off. Life, and the short stack's loving this. George is trying to show them the lights. <laughs> Here's the flop. And Holmes pairs his five. Aldemir open-ended. Holmes out of position. First to act here. Fires away, 3.4 million. You know, when you are one elimination from the final table, you usually don't mix it up with the <laughs> chip leader. Holmes has no fear. He is not invited to my home game or to any home game in California. In fact, I, I have the political muscle to keep him out of the state altogether. <laughs> Aldemir with his draw, not going anywhere. He makes the call, and that pot is already bigger, Norman, than four of the stacks at the table. Another queen on the turn, and the fourth club for Holmes. Yeah, George, you're mixed up with the chip leader. He checks. Yeah, George right now, suddenly not in the mood to show them the lights.
Aldemir pauses as well. River card, and bingo! <laughs> Fives full for George Holmes! Well, I think George is ready to show them the lights oh, again. Yeah, right? Thought maybe he was getting the pot even pre-flop. <laughs> he's going to win a much bigger pot now. There is a bet of 8.4 million. Not much Karai can do here. Yep. One last farewell look at those cards, and he does tap out. George Holmes going right to the head man for a boost to his chip stack. Yes. Some confusion early in the hand, but no confusion when it's done. Holmes dragging chips from the chip leader. Ten players left at one table. Karai Aldemir, the big stack on the left, the short stack in the middle. Demosthenes Kyriopoulos moved almost all in. Park and East had the blinds. They fold. Aldemir raises Kyriopoulos all in. He calls with a stray and leads Aldemir's queen ten. Well, seems like a, a fair fight. The, the guy with 134 million chips who knocks out a player every 23 minutes versus the guy with 4 million chips and no idea what's about to hit him. Demosthenes was second in chips to begin this day seven, now on the porch of being the final table bubble boy. I love that. Yeah, good luck to the 30-year-old who's about to bubble the final table. <laughs> Karai can come from ahead, come from behind. Right now, he's trying to make a million bucks and have eight others join him at the final table. Demosthenes looking for help, but a queen in the window for Aldemir. Is anyone surprised? A bevy of outs for DK with a flush draw. Maybe Demosthenes can avoid the inevitable. Maybe everyone at this table rooting against him, though. DK looking for a survival card. That is not it. We're one street closer to our final nine. Aldemir trying to do the deed again. Kyriopoulos must have an ace or a spade on the river or we have our main event final table. The river card, the jack of clubs, and Aldemir does it again. And in the process, makes millionaires of his final table mates. Demosthenes, Kyriopoulos, we hardly knew ye. Day seven, not kind to the Canadian. Out in 10th place, Karai Aldemir continues his assault on this main event. He will be the overwhelming favorite when play resumes at the final table. The journey was unique for each of our surviving nine, but their destination is the same. So there is your official final nine on the Caesars Sportsbook leaderboard. Aldemir with the monster stack. Jeff Platt down on the floor with the 140 million chip man. Corey Aldemir, Corey, you are taking the chip lead into the World Series of Poker main event final table. What's it like to hear that? It's surreal, really. It's a, I mean. I can't believe it still. The day has been incredible. I've been hitting every river, like every card. Always my dream card came basically, especially in that, in that big pot. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. What kind of competition awaits you tomorrow and perhaps the next day as well? I mean, they're all super good. Um, actually, with two of the, the players, I haven't really played yet at, at all. But I heard that they're good and the rest I know is good. So. It's going to be tough and uh, it's going to be a little bit of pressure because I'm the chip leader, I guess. Uh, yeah, so let's see how it goes. And finally, Korai, how in the world do you sleep tonight? <laughs> yeah, it's going, to, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, but I, I, I'll try. Let's, let's see. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you, Korai. Just an amazingly smooth day seven journey for Karai Aldemir to the chip lead at the main event final table. On the other end of the spectrum, I've got to ask, how is Jareth East still here? <laughs> well, this is one of the purest moments of the poker year. One player's dream is crushed while nine celebrate like they won a million dollars. And heck, they did. Karai Aldemir will be the heavy favorite to win it all. But we'll see what the eight others have to say about that.